Hey, thanks for taking the time to, well, you haven't got any choice, actually. I'm just talking at you, if you like. But I'm here also to present to you why I think it's not a bad idea and not that expensive as well if you become a member. And this is how you can do it, and this is what you can gain. So if we look here at the Talking Tennis sort of homepage, if you like, on YouTube, uh, we can see this little button here which says Join. It is also pinned in the live chat as well, and you can also, I think, see it just below most of our videos, certainly the live ones and so on. Now, why is it a good idea to join and become a member? Well, in the live chat, you can add little funny things, you can add emojis and all sorts of things, but possibly more importantly, you can get to access some live videos, such as this one here, uh, where we look back on the last sort of few moments from the Billie Jean King Cup. So there are little bonuses such as this one, but there are many, many more. And in fact, if we have a quick look at all of the members only stuff, stuff, I repeat, you will see very, very quickly um, some of the top, top stuff that we've had for members only over the last 12 months. Uh, since the channel began. Remember, these videos are for members only. You can become a member from as little as about $2 a month, two euros a month, uh, two pounds a month, something like that. There are various different things. Oh, and by the way, you'll also be supporting the channel. So it's a win, 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 win scenario. Uh, let me just show you some of the members only stuff, for example. Uh, we've got an exclusive uh, little clip there talking to Laura Siegmund, uh, Laura Tsurenko, her encore interview, some doubles footage there from Monastir, the Germany press conference pre-tournament Billie Jean King Cup, Claire Burrell talking as well to the media in her press conference in Monastir, Storm Hunter and Alicia Parks interview, um, uh, Rebecca Masarova, her press conference, Coco Goff, exclusive for members only, albeit it was in Madrid. But these are just some of the things, some of the interviews and etc. like Lestien here, a chat with him, Emma Navarro, and so on and so forth. So many little bonus videos available for just two euros a month. So what are you waiting for? Become a member. Or don't. It's okay. Nick, by the way, some people might be surprised to see him, but I'm wondering if uh, he saw the late lineup change or late lineup introduction of Jethro and thought, ah, I need to get in on some of that. Nick? That's exactly what happened, John. That is exactly what happened. Because let's face it, Jethro is the most elusive member of the team. And, uh, you know, uh, clearly um, he's uh, clearly you're being a little bit more needy towards him. Uh, but Jethro uh, or not, because clearly mm. that's going to be the theme for the stream. And I think Ashley is going to be very sad that she's missing out on the opportunity. Well, indeed. Uh, talking of Ashley, I want to share this. Uh, with, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Play. Hi. I'm here for a fairly spontaneous uh, video just to give some thoughts ahead of uh, what I believe is day nine, uh, although I must say I'm getting confused between all these days at the Australian Open. What I will say is though it is round four, and so we are now officially into the second week, and the matches today uh, include uh, Azarenka against Yastremska, uh, Borges against Medvedev, and many more, but I won't specify them all now because I'm going to give you some predictions for these matches ahead. 
I didn't do one on the eve of the tournament. So Nostradamus was sleeping on the eve of the tournament, let's say, and it therefore was unable to give you that unbelievable pattern of results that tend to come to fruition, more or less. Uh, last year, of course, I did get the men's final right by saying uh, Sitspat and Djokovic would make it, make it with Djokovic winning. I also tipped Sabalenka to win the title. And hey, presto, a couple of weeks later, she did. So pay attention to these round four predictions. They're coming up. Azarenka Yastremska, uh, for me, this falls into the category like a couple of other matches today where an underdog or a qualifier uh, who has exceeded expectations is finally going to meet their match and run into one hurdle too many. And that applies here. So you could probably guess where I'm going with this. Although I do see Yastremska taking a set, but ultimately with Azarenka prevailing and maybe going all the way to the final. Let's see. Uh, Noskova against Svitolina, similar category. Noskova, underdog. Svitolina, fancied, if you like, and may well also get to the final. In fact, many people, Svitolina, Azarenka, let me know in the comment section below where you fall between those two, arguably the two favorites or, or certainly uh, most experienced and, and fancied players to get to the final. Of course, Azarenka is a Grand Slam winner. Svitolina, yet to win a slam. Is this going to be her year? Well, I do expect her to make the quarterfinals and set up that uh, eagerly anticipated clashes that would be with Azarenka. Uh, again, I'll go three sets. Let's go for Noskova to take a set. Uh, Borges, Medvedev, also similar, similar category. I see Medvedev just being too good. Borges' is incredible run, an incredible result in the previous round, knocking out the informed Grigor Dimitrov. Wonderful. But here it comes to an end. And I'll go straight sets. That's the conviction I have for the 2021 and 2022 Australian Open finalist, uh, Daniel Medvedev. Of course, he's yet to win the title here down under. Um, how far can he go? Can he go on and win the title? Mm. Discuss. Uh, Zverev Nori, for me, Zverev straight sets. Um, Nori beating Rude in the previous round in four sets. Yeah, kind of impressive, but... For the number 19 seed, I just think that this is a step up and it's going to be a step up too far. So I'll have the German prevailing there. Her catch, Kazo, similar. I think her catch is actually some of his assignments have been far tougher early on in the tournament and actually kind of impressive that he's got this far, given how tricky I think his draw has been. But today it's going to get a little bit easier against the guy who upset Runa in the previous round. And I expect her catch to prevail pretty comfortably again in straight sets. Uh, Paulini Kalinskaya, maybe the easiest one for me to predict. I know Damien feels the same way as well. And as a result, I am going with uh, Kalinskaya to win that one uh, against Paulini. I'll go in three sets. Uh, I think they're quite evenly matched, but I, I saw Kalinskaya play on the eve of the tournament. Um, and I thought, wow, that's impressive. She was very impressive. Um, pre-Australian Open. Uh, I think she beat Krajcikova. may have to edit this out. I forgot that one wrong. Uh, in Adelaide. Again, I'll edit this if I get that one wrong. <laughs> um, and I thought, wow, here we go. Karen Sky is uh, looking good. And she's continued that form into the Australian Open. Paulini, uh, friend of the show, perhaps. Yeah. Um, but Paulini is somebody who is um has some limits i fear and i hope i would love it if jasmine was shoving my words down my throat like a bowl of pasta um sadly though i do think those limits will get exposed i mean they might not get exposed today she may well win this match but um i do think sooner rather than later the italian is exiting the tournament and i'm going to predict it to be today albeit in three sets uh zheng dodin Comfortable win for Zheng for me, straight sets for her. To be honest with you, when I was mentioning Azarenka and uh, Svitolina in that might get to the final discussion, Zheng was also in my mind. For me, it's kind of between those three. Um, maybe some other people out there might fancy Kalinskaya or, or, or another player. But um, for me, it's, it's those three. Uh, but we'll see. Um, but for me, she's winning that one in straight sets over the French woman. Finally, Kitsmanovic Alcaraz. 
Do we remember that incredible match that they had in Miami uh, a couple of years ago? Wow. If they could show half of the drama and excitement and quality more than anything else from that particular day, we are in for a treat. Slight difference in styles. I like Kitsmanovic, and I like him on a hardcore and clay. And I have to say that maybe I'm a bit biased because I think I saw his two peaks in 2023 coming in Estoril making the final and then obviously beating Jack Draper and playing really well at the Davis Cup. And maybe I'm being deceived by Kitsmanovic and his level and, and some of the spectacular shots that he was able to produce across those two events. And I see him taking a set against Alcaraz, maybe even the first one. But ultimately, I see Carlitos prevailing in four sets. Let me know what you think about my predictions in the comments below. If it sounds like I've forgotten to unmute myself, that's because I had forgotten to unmute myself. And by the way, I had another amusing, witty intro lined up, but that's how we are on Talking Tennis. We react fast. Um, my, other, my other intro was, uh, if it looks like I'm about to go for a run, it's because I was about to go for a run, <laughs> and then time got the better of me, and the chair I was sitting in got rather comfortable, and the <laughs> temptation of... Jethro and Owen and not wanting to let them down was too great. Uh, do not adjust your television sets, although television is a bit old school. Uh, your iPhones or your smartphones or your laptops. That is Jethro you see again for yeah. the second time in three days, something like that. Although mm. days and nights uh, also get the better of me at the moment. How are you doing, Jethro? Yeah, not too bad. It's, uh, it's late on a Sunday, but oh well. Thought I'd come on for a bit. I meant to ask you, what is that behind you? It's like a sun? Like yeah, I don't really know. Just, I found it online. Looks good. You don't know what it is? No. Just saw it. I just saw it. I was looking for like like tapestries online and saw that. I was like, yeah, that looked nice. Owen, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Uh, good to see both of you. Um, I've been trying to chase down Jethro for a phone call to catch up forever. So this is a... Uh, um, chasing Jethro. Day. That could be a series. That could... Yeah, I don't. I don't sound. I don't come out well in any of this. To be honest, I was getting roasted the other night for about an hour for my appearances on Talking Tennis. Well, I, I, I'll lay off you then. Uh, good to see you. No, but was, I was getting chased down for a popcorn tennis podcast for ages as well. I think they've given oh, up. Yeah. Right yeah, that didn't last I, very long. Did it? No, I have uh, three beverages at my side, but you'll all be surprised that none of them are alcoholic. I've had like three days of. Um, Let's say too many beers and caipirinhas and all sorts. So uh, <laughs> the first one is this weird little concoction uh, with some strawberries on it. Um, uh, it. Looks like it's for a child to keep them quiet when they're screaming in the baby seat. So maybe that is for me, so I don't scream too much. Uh, water, but this is the uh, this is the cool one. This is cocoa juice or coconut juice. So I should say. Um, coconut it's cooler when i've when you've got the actual coconut and you you know you look cool then uh and i wish i could look cool right now but getting one at nine o'clock at night is is quite tricky but i picked one up on a market earlier okay we're not here to talk about uh juices and coconuts we are here supposedly allegedly to talk tennis did you see or catch any of my predictions? I mean I saw you guys talking in the private chat about Cruz Hewitt among other things and Leo Paul. <laughs> But then if you caught any of my predictions, uh, if you did, can you remember any? And if not, I'll, I'll remind you, don't worry, for today. I, 
I remember you said um, Ketsmanovic is going to take a set off Alcaraz uh, because, and I, I think all of us as tennis fans are still kind of collectively seduced by his level in Miami in uh, mm. 2022, just because that match with Alcaraz was so amazing. So e- even though my head may not agree with that prediction, my heart fully does. Ghosty wants me to do the coconut thing again. Um, yeah, and of course that influenced me as I, as I highlighted when I was talking about that match. But also the the, uh, I mean, I just sort of kept seeing uh, every time I've had it against Manovic, In his own words, he was on fire. He told me in Estoril last week, "I'm on fire." And the next day, and by the way, excellent English, but also excellent English and able, able to switch. The next day, I said to him, "I said yesterday, you said you were on fire. What are you today?" And he said, "I was blazing today." I was like, "Wow, that's <laughs> pretty cool in your in your second language to to come up with that so quickly." And he was until he ran into Casper Ruud in the final. Uh, but then he produced it again, this time on an indoor hard court against Jack Draper. And there he was again. And I spoke to him again about, oh, by the way, in Estoril, you were you were blazing and you were on fly and all that. And he said, yeah, that those comments didn't last very well in terms of the rest of the year. Um, mm-hmm. Every time I spoke to Misha, as, as friends uh, call him, although I'm not quite sure if I fall into friends category, not yet. Um, you know, every time I was watching, he was sensational. What, what do you think, Jethro, about my prediction of him taking the set? Yeah, I can see it. I think it's probably... I'll be honest, I was looking over the matches tonight. They're not that interesting, apart from, like, Svitolin uh, against Noskova is probably the easy standout. Okay, yeah. And then mm-hmm. Ketmanovic Alcaraz is probably second. So, I can, yeah, I can see him taking a set, maybe. Uh, as yeah, as I said, the, I think everyone thinks of that Miami match between them, which was amazing. I think afterwards I tweeted that Ketmanovic was going to finish the year in the top 15. And they're belly won matches for the rest of the rest of the season. Um, he's a very streaky player, but he's he's on a he's on a roll right now. So, yeah, I hope it's good. It should be. Are you, are you both sort of with me, or are you sort of more straight sets, Carlos Owen? I, I don't. Know, I, I think I'm with you. Um, Carlos hasn't really wowed me so far. He, um, I mean, he demolished Shang, but um, I don't think Shang had that much for him. Um, and uh, what I've seen from Carlos, I feel like his forehand is slightly off. I don't know if either of you got that, but he's not, I don't know, some some of them don't have as much pace as I've sort of come to expect from him. And so, like, if that forehand isn't totally there, um, then I think everyone is going to push him a little harder. Um, I don't, ah, this is hard. I feel like, and Ketsmanovic also could be gassed, because that match with Paul, even though it was uh, 6-0 in the fifth, that was a tough match. So, mm. I don't know, I'll say either straight sets with a couple of close sets or four sets ending with like a six one. Yeah, I see the same thing happening to be honest. Um I was surprised he beat Tommy Pool actually. Me too. And from two match points out, that was a super impressive one. Yeah, I woke up and I think I went to either I went to sleep really late or I woke up in the middle of the night. Probably both. But at some point I saw Paul was um two sets to one up and I was like, okay, I reckon he's going to cruise to the finish line now. And then I woke up, saw that Kate Manovich had won. Dimitrov had lost a Borg in four sets. Oh, God. at the moment I logged on to, like, just like, opened up Flash Gore, they lost to Noskova. Yeah. Some other stuff. I was like, what the hell? And then, like, Nori beat Rude in four, which I didn't see coming. I was like, what yeah. is going on? Yeah. I, I mean, the, the moment like that for me was like that, and I don't even remember what happened on this night, but like the night when it was like, um, this is like one of the best days in history of uh, the early majors. Yeah. And so I watch some of it and then I go to bed and I wake up and like Rabakina has lost in this, you know, insane legend, instantly legendary tie break. And I just tweeted what, because I couldn't believe it. Yeah. No, I think I, I saw it was like eight all or something. I was like, oh, because so, there was like another match coming up soon. So I was like, okay, I'll put that on. Mm-hmm. until this match I want to watch comes up and then kind of like went on my phone a bit and then looked up and it was 13 all and I was like what yeah. and then it just kept going and going um yeah and I just think it's been a bit downhill since then the days the mm-hmm. of the street and open to be honest yeah um, yeah I watched I think I watched the first three games of Djokovic Manorino last night yeah. and I was like I was like yeah this tells me all I need to know about where this match is going <laughs> really Manorino oh do anything to touch Djokovic. So oh, I started oh. watching, yeah, like Leighton Hewitt's son. Really? Uh, God, he's got a long way to go. 
but like it was good to watch him at least um but yeah 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 that's good like um i mean what do you so he's a junior right yeah, he's only, fair, he's only 15, so um, okay, you know, he's so. still a fair bit younger than, you know, he's playing the sixth seed as well, so. Right. What, what's, like, the main difference between a 15-year-old and a pro player? Like, mm-hmm. what what differences do you notice? Well, it's funny because, like, the only 15-year-old I've really kind of watched, I think I've watched two 15-year-olds kind of highlights of them, and that's Carlos Alcaraz, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I think when Felix was making waves, which is weird yeah. to think about now, but when Felix was making waves, he was like 15, 16 on the Challenge Tour. Um, and I mean, they would absolutely annihilate Hewitt's son right now. Um, it's just, um, I think his techniques, his techniques still kind of all over the place a bit. Mm-hmm. There's um, like not much consistency, but like he plays some really, some of his point construction was properly like his, you know, like his old man. So that was cool. Nice. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously, serve. So that's the thing. You're a child. You're not. You can't return or serve big. Right. Um. So that's a big thing. Um. But then off the ground, yeah. I mean, this. I think that's a big thing between like around the challenger futures level and and the main tour is the serve makes a massive difference. But yeah, yeah when you when you're juniors, like it's just all so different. That's what like like Sebastian Byers was a you know junior world number one, and he's obviously awesome but you know i'd be amazed if he ever cracked the top 10. he could crack the top i think he'll definitely crack the top 20. he's only 25 in the live rankings right now so yeah easily i, cracked I, the top I, I could 20. see him getting to 10 to be honest i mean if yeah he, like, if, if if demon can do it i think it's possible no, no, yeah, no, no fair, like, to alex but yeah mm. and like with a forehand like that and the way he moves on clay i could see him getting top 10 but um yeah, so it just that just shows that there's such a huge level between, like, such a huge gap between juniors. I mean, yeah, like Monfils, for example, was like one of the best juniors ever, and to be fair, had a has had a fantastic career. But you know, it yeah, doing well at juniors just doesn't always translate to to the pro tour, really. Like Donald Young was another one, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, he had he was a huge kind of I think unfortunate letdown of potential for American tennis. Um, um, it, yeah. it, it, it is interesting though because I kind of think I agree that there are huge gaps between like futures and the pro tour but then I think there are huge gaps on the pro tour as well you know like um, mm. I think the difference you know when people say if you watch the number five and the number 500 the difference is mental like I, I don't agree with that at all I think like the difference between 20 and 10 is huge the difference between 10 and 5 is huge Djokovic shows how big the difference is between one and anything else whenever he plays um, yeah yeah, it's Does crazy. it depend on eras, though, and moments in time? I mean, there might be a competitive top 20 where they're all fairly interchangeable, but we probably have been living through a more recent period where the top three were a long way ahead of everyone else, and maybe even right now the top one or two. Yeah, although I, I don't know if I can recall an era where the top 20 were really interchangeable. Like I think there's always some variation of one or two people are just real standouts um Mm -hmm. even if it's not to the extent of what we have right now like you know sampras was a standout the other players were not like him even though he wasn't as good as or accomplished as the big three and so i think there's kind of always a version of that yeah yeah my internet dropped as it is it does occasionally i know owen and i had a a thing a couple weeks ago but fingers crossed it'll it'll stay okay for the next couple of hours um oh owen uh, this is a bit random because I'm sure you've been talking about different things in the last five minutes while I'm gone. I was gone, but there was a tweet from you that I wanted to yeah. speak to you about. I think I tried to respond to it, but I don't know if I ever. I don't think I ever clicked send. And it was it was basically on Sabalenka. Did you say something in the last 24 hours about you know it's hers to lose or she should win the tournament or she's the favorite to get to the like something about Sabalenka and and it was positive, but then you caveated it with a with a like a unless she runs into the semi-final or final issues, right? Yeah, so I think the tweet was um, Sabalenka in tennis terms is the best player in the world because what holds her back is she chokes a lot in semifinals. Right. And finals. Like when, I think when she's on, she's just unstoppable. And um, it, funnily enough, I actually have Coco winning this tournament. I don't think Sabalenka is the favorite, but um, yeah, I mean, Sabalenka's avoided any trouble in the early rounds whatsoever. Anna Samova used to give her issues, beat her really comfortably. I don't think there are really, like, 
it, who, if someone were to say, like, who is Sabalenka Kryptonite, I don't really think there's an answer to that besides, like, her own mind and sometimes her serve. Um, mm -hmm. And I think all the other top players kind of have issues that she does not have. Um, so for, from that standpoint, like, I, I do think her game is the best in the world right now. I, I kind of, I'm okay with you on all of that, but each single point that you made there, I sort of, I'm a little bit, like, is there a Kryptonite for her? I mean, Iga has to be the one on an average day who's, I mean, uh, who's the one? I know, what's the head to head? I don't know. I'm going to guess like 5 2, something like that, 5 3, maybe. Um, so it's close. It's not, it's not, it's not um, Ostapenko, Iga esque, if you like. I get that. Um, maybe Rebakan is on a bit of a run. Again, you look at the big picture and it's like, I don't know, four all their head to head or something. But, but but then Rebecca, I think, is on a run of three straight wins. And if that continues, that it's almost more important than the previous three matches that that, that, that Sabalenka may have won. So not not kryptonite, I agree. There's no there's no kryptonite out there for her exactly. But each of those other points, uh, where shall I begin? Uh, she's the best player in the world right now. Mm. I don't know. I I I saw she was she's not won a tournament since May. Yeah. So best player in the world to not win a tournament since May. Don't know if I can quite go that far. Then there's also the WTA finals where Eager was just streets ahead of everyone else. Um yeah. I mean if she gets back to world yeah. number 1, fine. So do you know what I mean? I'm not I'm not like yeah. oh and I I'm against you on every all of these it's just like I find that I'm not quite on board with all of the points. Um, uh, absolutely, was... and I, Go on. I, I have counterpoints, but Jethro, I want to hear your thoughts first because I've been talking way too much. Oh, Jethro, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, I, yeah, I was just gonna, I was gonna say that yeah, Eager is six three in the head to head with Sabalenka, um, but okay, I do yeah. kind of, I do agree with an extent with her, to, with her because I think as much as titles matter, like the eye test is still a massive thing, like. Say after the first two rounds of Australian Open, you could the last three months. Like you would, you could have argued Sinner is the most informed ATP player right now because Djokovic was horrible against Bobirin, pretty average against Prismich, um, and Sinner just blasted his way through his opponents, beat Djokovic at the Davis Cup, beat him in the round robin at the ATP finals. Obviously, Djokovic won the final that mattered, but like in terms of who looks like they were playing the best tennis in the world sinner up until probably the last couple of rounds now Djokovic has raised his level um and I think the same with Sabalenka I think she's just looks like the best player in the world even though she hasn't had a title since May and I think yeah like there isn't really a game plan against her when she's playing her best tennis so that's kind of why I agree with her to be honest one 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 thing with Sabalenka's draw is at the beginning it looked like maybe along with Coco perhaps the easier one amongst the the, the, the top four players. Um, whereas actually the problem is for her is that that from this from from yesterday onwards actually the the, the players that could get there have got there. Okay, maybe Anna Samova we may have been a bit surprised about and but then there was Andreva or Krajicka in the next round. So now, funnily enough. Sabalenka's run actually does start to look tricky because all of the sort of big players or players in form are best. Obviously, Coco in the semis. Uh, I'm not quite sure who her quarterfinal opponent potentially uh, would be. Um, it's uh, Krejcikova. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Krejcikova is the quarterfinal. Okay, so yeah. so Anisimova, Krejcikova, uh, Coco, and then whoever in the final. That's a you know that's a, a really good, really tough run. Suddenly, yeah. Um, but I, the final point, Owen, I think in in, in your sort of you, you, your thing was about the semi-final final problem my my the reason i'm not fully on board with that is i know the muck of a loss last year was yeah quite tough quite bad double breakup blah 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 um i ju i just think that if it if it was like Pagula-esque or Rublev-esque with their quarterfinal problem, and there's lots of caveats to that, as, as Damien was highlighting mm -hmm. earlier on today, and I uh, and, and a good tweet with Rublev, like if you keep running into, you know, Djokovic, Nadal, and, and, or whatever, it's it's tough, and Medvedev on a hard court. Um, but with Sabalenka, she's won a Grand Slam, and she's won a semi final, or she's won two semi finals, so. You know, sometimes maybe she just came up against Eager in New York. She was a breakup there, I guess. Mm -hmm. That was a really good match, by the way. I, 
I just think if she's losing semi-finals to not great players, or she's 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 unbelievable across the rest of the tour, and then suddenly at a Grand Slam she's not turning up. But as we see, I think it's it's five Grand Slams in a row now in semi-finals, and may well be six very soon. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I I'm not quite on board with it. I'm not quite on board with it. And and that's totally fair. And I I do hear that. But yeah, like I that was that was the point I wanted to make is um. I totally get if people say, you know, Iga just lost for the first time since September and Sabalenka hasn't won a title since May. Um, I think that's totally fair. But like you just said, John, you can't take Sabalenka out early in a major anymore. She's um, yeah. like she, she's going deep every single time. And um, and I, I do think some of these losses late in majors, it's it, you know, it, it is one thing to get outplayed. But I think in a lot of them, she's way up. Um, like that that U.S. Open final with golf, she's up a set, and oh, yeah. I, I I don't know about you guys, but when I watched that, by the end, I didn't really think, oh wow, Coco, oh like totally outplayed her. I sort of thought Coco hung around, and then she like broke Sabalenka's brain by defending so well. Um, I think if Sabalenka stays the course, she arguably should have won that match. She was up a set and a break on a Jabir in the Wimbledon semis. Um, she's up on Mukova. And so I feel like these are these are matches that she can be winning. I, I don't really view it as when the opposition gets tough, she starts losing. Um, but I, I I see the other side of it as well. And I think if she keeps losing in those, yeah, you you really can't call her the best player in the world if she's not winning majors. It's probably about seven semifinals that she's been to. Um, again, I'm I'm probably close to this, but I I haven't got it exactly right. But and she's won two. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, uh, Jethro, do you want to respond, by the way, to something that Owen just said regarding Sabalenko and, and anxiety, perhaps? No, I can, yeah, I kind of agree. I mean, I did, I will say, I did tweet the other night that Vegas Schwantek is the best player in the world, so I don't want to contradict myself. Um, I more kind of want to say I see the argument for both of them. I think those two in their own right are kind of ahead of the pack. I don't really know what happened to Iga this tournament because she looks so good coming in. Um, but yeah, something was off the knee possibly, but um, yeah, I was really surprised she lost to Noskova. I just, Me too, yeah. Col Collins, I would have understood because Collins yeah. was playing outstanding tennis and mm -hmm. I didn't actually watch the Noskova match. I was, uh, I was sleeping, but you know, as much as I do think Noskova is a great prospect, that was uh, that was a big shock. And, Iga's draw after Noskova was still not nice. You know, she had Svitolina to come, maybe. Um, oh, Azarenka or Ostapenko. Um, yeah, yeah. Rebecca was taken out for her, but then a final against uh, Sabalenka, maybe. So, yeah, that was yeah. Um, the match at least I was expecting her to lose, apart from Kenan. Absolutely. I, I, I saw her run, you know, at various points in the last week or so, or 10 days since the draw was made. And as soon as the draw was made, it's like, oh, this is tough. And mm. even though Rabakina went out, I was just like, she's going out at some point. I just don't know where, but she won't go out to Noskova. <laughs> um, and there you go, tennis. There's a good question from Ghosty, and I, I think we can address it very, very soon. Uh, but before we do, there's also this in my mind, Owen, uh, to sort of put a wrap on on Sabalenka, that, that now she's she's been there and done it and worn the T-shirt. I do think that does still help her in tough moments and i asked her about this in madrid and i'm going to play the video right now please sir. there were some australian open final vibes for me today and i was looking at a couple of comparisons australia was two hours 28 minutes today was 226 i'm sure you weren't aware of that but i tell you four championship points does that sound familiar <laughs> And, and were you thinking of it during that last game? Actually, yes, I was thinking when I was down uh, with the break in the last game, I was thinking, okay, I did it at the Australia Open, so probably I'll be able to to get this win this time again, and it's, really, it's, and it's actually helped me to, to stay focused and to have this belief in myself. And yeah, definitely this match reminds a lot uh, of Australia Open match. <laughs> And you can imagine that, right? I'd be thinking the same. Most humans would be, you know, when you've got that experience to fall on, because that final game against Rebecca a year ago, you know, if, if if she doesn't win that, Owen, then I'm on board. I'm on the train. I'm going choo-choo all the way to Sabalenka has some um, issues. But what whatever happens in the rest of their career, she's obviously got over that that hump. 
Yeah, and I, 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 I've heard Djokovic or, or yeah, Djokovic has certainly spoken about it, uh, and other players that once you've been there, that you, you like Djokovic kind of was saying it in that interview recently, where he said, you know, I get nervous, I get anxious, I get tight, but then I'm like, you know, uh, this is okay, this is gonna pass. I, I've I've been here before, and 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 that sort of that sort of rings true for me with Sabalenka to some extent. I, so I'm half I'm halfway with you, and I I, I totally get it. Like I I when she won that Australian Open, I totally expected like okay, all, all the demons are going to be gone now. She's fixed it. She's done it. It's it's not going to be an issue anymore. And and then the next major, um, you know, Mukova played very well to to take that match back. But I think the feeling at the time was like, oh my God, Sabalenka, like you let that go. And I and so. Uh, honestly and i'm not the first one to come up with this take but i think my angle is like she hasn't fixed the issues she's just so damn good that sometimes they don't matter um she double faulted on her first two championship points is that right in the australian open maybe it was just at least one of, one of them yeah at least yeah i mean the she was not the nerves were still there she just won anyway and so i think um i think they're going to be a constant presence in her career it's just that she's so good that sometimes she'll win regardless mm -hmm. Jethro? Yeah, no, I do, I do agree. I mean, if you look at her slam record last season after after she won the Australian Open, obviously collapsed completely against Mukova. Collapsed against Jabur in the Wimbledon semi-final. She was a break-up in that as well. Um, and would have, I think, would have absolutely routine Von Drusifer, um in the final if she'd uh, got through that match. And then collapsed against Coco Goff in the US Open final. So, yeah, the demons probably are still there. But I, mean, I think it will I, I, like she was playing, you know, the kind of next best players in, you know, Jabur, Mukova, Goff. So she was still playing really high quality opponents, but she wasn't playing anyone on her or Riga's level. So well, I she, still think it will take a very good player like Goff or someone else to, to take her out, even if she does get nervous. She's going super deep. I mean, I said that she has not won a tournament since May and um maybe one tournament in the last 12 months like so since the australian open to, to now i think it's just madrid but i could be wrong on that i know she won adelaide immediately prior to the australian open a year ago uh and then obviously won the aussie open so and of course she took the world number one spot albeit that was in the wake of, of making the final in new york uh but you know indian wells final as well and all those things um collapse yeah maybe maybe the mook of a one yeah i think the other ones set in a break yeah, it's a mini collapse, but um, anyway, it was a, well, it was a break up in the third set. I think that it was a break up was... in the third, was it? With, with yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. I thought it was, I, I think it was like a right. break in the second, too. I think it was like seven, six, four, three yeah. add, and uh, that's mm -hmm. right, yeah. I don't know if she was, perfect three, yeah. I don't think she was a break up in the third, Jethro, but I um, I could be wrong, yeah. That they're not great. I'm certain she was like four yeah. one or something like that. Someone in the chat can. And do some stuff on that and that's fine um okay i think we've done that one. there was a question here about uh pushing and defending for me it's quite easy to answer in a way in that that defending well like coco does or alcaraz does for example or rafa can do and djokovic to a, to a lesser extent i would argue although maybe some people disagree with that you know that doesn't mean that that carlos isn't maybe the most uh, 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 aggressive player on the tour on the men's side um it's just that you're incredibly quick. It's just that you're incredibly, your reflexes are insane. Your your flexibility, I mean, stretching is is the crazy thing, you know, and, and you're so athletic as, 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 as Coco is. You know, you might be down in the point. And, and that's why defending well in, in tennis is so spectacular. Pushing, well, maybe, Owen, you can give us an example of pushing, bearing in mind one of your favorite players on the women's sure. tour. Yeah, and I, I think the key difference is that pushing you're not in a defensive position, right? Pushing is like, you're just in a rally position and you're floating back and you're moonballing, stuff like that. Defending well, like that means someone's attacking you and you're like getting it back, getting it back. Pushing is you're just kind of hitting no pace balls. Like the greatest player of all time, Sarah Saribas Tormo, just joking. But um, <laughs> yeah, she, um, she she loves to hit with no pace all the time. Um, so I, I think that's pushing. Um, yeah, yeah like, like you said, John, um, Defending well is something that aggressive players can do as well. Yeah, right. All right, let's um, get some more sort of thoughts on these matches coming up, Some one of which is going to start very, very soon. Um, I went for Medvedev in straight sets over Borges. Are we all on board with that one? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I, I do want to ask Jethro, though, um, what do you think of Borges? Um, have, have you seen much of him? So, I mean, because I, um, I've got a bit of Portuguese heritage in me, so I'm always interested in Portuguese players. I've said I always really like Joao Souza. I was, uh, was a big fan of his. So when Borges, when I first came along sort of a couple of years ago now, kind of on the outskirts of the main main tour, kind of playing at challenges, I was keeping an eye on him. Um, but I didn't expect this. I always just thought he was going to be a really good, solid player, kind of around, you know, could reach maybe the top 50 one year. But yeah, did I expect him to beat Dimitrov? And I mean, who else did he beat? Yeah, Fakina in straight sets. Yeah. Um, Mm. Beat someone else of note as well. I mean, those um, two results alone. I mean, you can check the other the other uh, result before that, but those two results alone, straight sets. I think it was Davidovich for Keen. Davidovich for Keen had tweeted basically just saying, "This is not what I expect of myself." Mm. Um, it was uh, Mar Martere. I also do like quite a lot the uh, left-handed German. Um, so yeah, I didn't expect this. It's really really exciting, but I was. It's a shame because usually I would have been really really excited about that result, but in my pre-tournament bracket, which kind of went to absolute hell after the first hour <laughs> um, of the first day, I had Dimitrov in the semis. So he, I hadn't beaten yeah, Medvedev. I, had, I, had, I hadn't beaten Medvedev in this, you know, would-be match. So, um, yeah, that was um, that was a bit of a shock. But, you know, very, very happy for him. But I just, you know, he, he's, he's a very good player, very solid, plays a good game, but there's nothing... I just don't think there's anything Medvedev will, you know, have too much trouble with. Did you both have? Did Owen? Did you have um, Dimitrov in your semi as well? Uh, no, I, I didn't make a bracket, but I I, I no, just when Jethro was talking before he said it, I was I was gonna ask like you had Dimitrov in the semis, didn't you? Just because I yeah. knew, I, I knew Grigor was playing well. I knew a lot of people thought this was gonna be a great tournament for him. We I, always I, make the same mistake. He's... I know, man. He's like. It's like what what's the analogy with like um I don't know like you get cheated on or something and then they apologize and they're like this time's gonna be different and this time's not different <laughs> like that's uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I like Grigor a lot but it's he he has a way of kind of perpetually disappointing you after a good I think we could just we could just go to Scott's Twitter and type in the word Dimitrov and we would find about a thousand tweets oh that just God, describe man. this feeling perfectly as like, honestly. I honestly think Scott just recycles his old tweets and just changes a few words because I feel like I read the same tweet from him every week. <laughs> One week could be we... like, and like uh, he, I think every month he mentions the fact that Andy Murray lost the Wimbledon final and then went and won the Olympics on the same court. He's like, and I just think that's just so badass of him. I'm like, I know you do, Scott. We all do. Can we talk about his irrational hatred of Casper Ruud as well? I feel like yeah, I, sure. every, sure. every week he's like, I can't imagine anyone finding Casper Ruud's game attractive, but you know, with his sarcastic Mad Libs yeah. template, you know, like. Oh. What was it? Because it was uh, it was Ruud Nori, and he wasn't he like to the people currently watching Ruud Nori? Why are you doing this to yourself? <laughs> yeah, that was funny though, and now that, I, I'm not, I'm on board with that. I know I keep using this expression, but I'm on board with that. I'm less on board because I think Casper comes across as a, a, a nice guy. I actually don't find Casper as. Uh, you know, a, a boring watch. I think it depends on who he's playing and, and what surface it is and, and and various other things. I find I can see why people would look back at those two French Open finals in the last two years and go, well, this was a, a waste of time. And we knew it beforehand, like against Novak and, and also against Rafa. Um, it was a, a breakup on Novak. And I think he had a smash at about 30 all, I would say. At 30, 40. 30, 30, oh, 30, 40. So he lost his serve, did he? Okay, so he's 34. That's where he loses his serve. Yeah, and he had a smash, and, and that was it. That was the match in that one moment, um, if you like, uh, because then it goes to a tie break, and, and we know what happens from that moment onwards. Uh, I, I've got, I'm sharing as Azarenka, uh, Yastremska on the screen. Uh, fingers crossed I can pronounce that name right for the next couple of hours. Uh, Andre is going to be joining us again in, in a few minutes as well. So nice. that's cool uh oh and you're welcome to stay as long as you want i want i want to go through some of my predictions from today at the yeah, very yeah. least anyway i mentioned borges medvedev uh ketsmanovic alcaraz i've done um i went for talk let's do azarenka Astrem's good right now because that is about to start i went for azarenka in three hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, well. we can hear jethro time He's like, who is? I wanted to quickly okay. double check Yes Drunk's results so far. Um, I mean that's just bizarre that she 
tussled her way through no names in qualifying and then beat the Wimbledon champion 6 one 6 in the first round. So that's hilarious. Oh, I saw um, that one. I forgot about that match. That looks oh. really, really funny when you look at the results all next to each other. Um, she was solid in the first round against Marquetta, but Marquetta, I don't know. I don't know. There was something uh, amiss with her in terms of movement, in terms of... I mean, it's, it's, it's a cliche and it was super hot. It was a lunchtime match and often the worst to play in, in, in Australia in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she was, she looked like she was being affected by the heat, but it could have been me putting two and two together and making five. Listen, your strength score is good. And I think it probably helps the fact that she had those three qualifiers and, and, and uh, Marquetta just suddenly was like a rabbit in the headlights, but not necessarily because of like the occasion, but just, just didn't seem to be able to compete. Um, and, and that was that match. But go on, Jethro, continue. With, what, who else has Jess Dremska beaten en route? Um, this is the thing of, um, yeah, Gretzheva and Navarro, and she needed three sets to beat Navarro. Um, and I was impressed with Azarenka's pretty easy takedown of Ostapenko, so I think I would say Azarenka in straights. Did the Azarenka-Ostapenko result surprise you, Owen? I think so, but I can't tell if it was because I expected Ostapenko to win or because we had been talking so much about Ostapenko being in Iga's path that I just kind of assumed it would happen. Um, mm -hmm. Azarenka is very good at the Australian Open, um, made the semis last year, and she was in position to win the first set against Rabakina, um, you know, before she didn't. Um, so, and, but I, I also don't know a whole lot about Yastromska, I have to admit. So, yeah, I mean, I lean Azarenka, but. It's how often do we see in best of three, like a player looks amazing one round and then the next round they just get taken out. It's and anything's possible. Yeah, I don't know a lot about her, but I'm really pleased that I, I'd actually forgotten that match. Uh, it was a week ago, I guess, when she beat um, Marquetta. But um, fortunately, I watched that one from, from start to finish. So it, it gave me some thought regarding this match she's got against Azarenka. Uh, but the, the result against Ostapenko actually didn't entirely surprise me I, I don't know if i made a prediction i certainly made a prediction of azarenka winning the match but i don't know if i went to to straights or threes three sets but um i just don't trust ostapenko that's the problem mm. for me fair, um, fair. you know she the, the two matches she had back to back in new york last year against Iga, followed by coco that yelena ostapenko there we go in in 48 hours for you the i, I couldn't get that coco result out of my head when also considering this Azarenka encounter, as well as the fact that they both played each other recently uh, in a warm-up uh, event where Azarenka won all bit in three sets that occasion. So, yeah. Um, and you go for Azarenka to win today, Owen? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Zheng Dodin, Zheng, everyone, to win? Yeah. Th though, again, Still I don't know does it much of anything about her opponent. No, but does mm. it fall into this category as well for both of you? This is where it's it feels like, a, listen, it's a, been a very unpredictable top half, I think, to the women's uh, draw so far. So <laughs> probably all of this will be wrong and uh, maybe even in as little as a few hours from now. But it feels like a three-horse race between Azarenka, Svitolina and Zheng for mm -hmm. that Australian Open final. Uh, when, I've, when I've put out a poll or two I, uh, on Twitter, I, I, I framed it that way. I put, who's making the Aussie Open final from the top half of the women's singles draw? Zheng, Azarenka, Svitolina, other. Um, you, you don't think it's going to be deal. Jasmine Paulini, John? I don't. And, and I, I hope that I wasn't being too harsh on her. Uh, I just think there's a limit. And, and the limit yeah. is probably well, now. I would say all three of those, all three of those players you mentioned are probably very worthy finalists. But I, yeah, I think Zheng is someone by now I would have expected her to be kind of smashing through these kind of draws by now. She's so talented and there was a lot of hype around her especially in that French Open match where she took a set off eager but you know she yeah. really struggled in her last round would have loved a Zheng v Radicani match that would have been really really nice but yeah so me too yeah that would she just needs to make more light work of these sort of matches you know she should be being doted quite quite comfortably She's a little lucky, I think in that the eager going out because I think eager probably would have been one step too far for Kinwin. Hey Andre Andre, hey guys! Hey man, I didn't realize they already put me in the in the live. Sorry, sorry. I, um, <laughs> I should have given you a, a thumbs up or, or, or the other way around. Andre, That's Owen, like Owen, Andre, Owen, Jethro, Jethro, Owen. 
uh, and all the rest of it. That poll, actually, you can see on the screens right now, feels about right. I'm surprised other didn't get a few more votes, actually, because I do feel as though it's quite balanced between mm. those four options. It's it's really difficult on Twitter. They only give you four, right? And and it's yeah. always difficult quite how to frame it. But actually, this was a much easier one for me because it was like, there's a three-horse race, and I don't want to disrespect the other players in the top half because they've all got a chance. Um, yeah. Albeit, I think Paulini's falls a little bit more in the in the lower chance. I, I think Paulini's losing to Callan Sky. Let's get to, to that match. Um, I, I'll come to you in a second, Andre. Uh, but first, uh, Jethro, um, Callan Sky, I've gone to beat Paulini in three sets. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I haven't actually watched either of them so far, but uh, I think Callan Sky going by been... going by name and reputation, I would yeah. This guy also had a really good win against Kai Chikova in uh, in Adelaide, I think, just before the tournament began. So, mm -hmm. actually, I'm possibly basing maybe some of her pre-tournament performances even more. Um, uh, Andre, you got any thoughts on Kalin Sky, Paulini? Not at all, honestly. Like, I mean, <laughs> Paulini has been doing has been doing well, but I don't really know too too much about these players. I feel like. What about the players? On the screen, Andre, I've got four options to get okay. to the final there. If you were voting or maybe... I'm, I'm sure you already have voted, of course, but no, go on. Tell me who you, who, which one are you going for for those four. I was just going to make a joke that other looks really good today, so I whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, of all of these, I think Alina's Vitalina is the most experienced... I mean, not the most experienced. That would be Victoria Zarenka, but like, I don't know. I feel like she's shown the best form over the past year in a bit like she played really well Wimbledon like that's probably the most notable run that she had last year but I don't know I think I think Azarenka is probably liking her chances now that her main rivals that are really the ones who would almost um almost surely stop her which would be probably um which would be Rubakina essentially and Sviantek um not necessarily surely would stop her but I think people would still like her chances better um, but I think now that the draw has opened up, I think she she really likes her chances. So I wouldn't be surprised if Azarenka reached the final, to be fair. Owen? Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of Andre's points. I, I, I was surprised to see um, Svitolino a little ahead of Azarenka in that poll because of their um, because of Azarenka's track record at the Australian Open. Um, but yeah, I, I, w I would love to see a match between those two. I think um, so Svitolino is playing Noshkova, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm very interested to see if Noskova can sustain her level from the Ega match because if she can, I think she wins. But at 19, that's it's going to be really difficult. It's really difficult for anyone to sustain like probably the best match you've ever played into the next round. Um, but yeah, I, I think like you said, Jethro, I think that's earlier. I think that's the match that I'm most excited for. Yeah. So Azarenka and uh, Yastrzemska have got underway, and actually Yazarenka already has a break point. Um, so which one are you voting for in that in that list to get to the final? Because I, mean, I think I'm going Azarenka, I think. Yeah, I think I am too, but I have no confidence in that. Um, I'm also a bit of a fan of Azarenka, so I'm a little afraid of jinxing it. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think, I don't know, she, she's had an interesting kind of like second almost prime, right? Like she had that US Open final, she had the Australian Open semi. She's kind of like knocking on the door sometimes of being a title contender, but has never quite gotten there. Um, maybe this will be the tournament. I heard some, when I was tipping her to beat off the pain code, um a couple of days ago, it might have been Damien, it might have been Vanch, I'm not sure. They were just talking about uh, Azarenka's movement not being what it once was. Yeah. Um, is that how you see it as well, Owen? Yeah, I think so. I think her biggest strength is her return of serve. That's still awesome. But I think um, I'm not sure that anything else is as good as it used to be. Yeah. Um, all right. I think sort of, yeah, as a rank, a slight favorite there, although she's just um, not taking advantage of that break of serve opportunity. Uh, Matteo, wonderful to have you on board. We've just been talking about um, Paulina Kalinskaya, and, and I think I certainly am. Um, slightly more towards Kalin Sky winning this match but um there we go we'll see how that pans out Matteo by the way if you are new do hit the like button and uh please do subscribe um what were some of my other predictions today um, um I, I Zverev winning in straight sets over Nori 
Mm. I just want to add like one last thought about um, oh, Azarenka please, here please. that she's she's on. actually playing right now and she's playing Estremska against whom she has a losing record. So she? we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, and she lost her their last two matches that they played in in 2022 and 2023 in straight sets. Um, oh, wow. Where were they? What yeah. surfaces? Uh, hard courts. Uh, they all they okay. played all their matches in the hard courts. Um, Azarenka uh, lost in Washington 6 4 6 love in 2022. And in Guadalajara, she lost 6 4 7 6 last year, September. Okay. So, yeah, it's just a thing that I was just thinking about it. Like, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself as she's like on court mm, this, right now. But <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. I was like, I could say Azarenka's going to make that final, and then I'm going to wake up tomorrow and she's. She's lost this match, so um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and we're also still so far away from the final. Like this is still round four. Like yeah, yeah. He's, it's, oh, we're nowhere close. I, I have no confidence in my picks. Yeah, I do I really do. miss the first week already. Yeah. So much. I just made a my, about half, that. Yeah, half my. I think I liked it, actually. Half my brain is already thinking about the golden swing. If I'm being fully <laughs> honest. I I am too for, for obvious reasons, but um, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, Nori winning, sorry, Nori winning. Uh, Zverev winning in straight sets over Nori. Anyone disagree with that? In anyone got Nori to win against Zverev? Um, yeah, my blind hopefulness for the world to be an okay place is to have Nori win that match. But uh, well, if he brings the level he had against Rude, who knows? Um, what else is going on? I see Nori in five. Nori yes. in five. Let's yeah. go, Norian five. Is that, a, is, that a, is that a hope or an expectation? Um, uh, I think I can. I can. I think you can see it. It's a bit of a hope and a bit of I can. I can justify it with like at least a little bit of confidence, but it's probably like seventy percent hope. I, I hate to say it, but Zverev's won all eight sets they've played. So I, yeah, I, I agree with mm. you, John. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, I didn't even know that, but I, I, I still felt that way. Uh, pretty much just one match left that we haven't discussed uh, in terms of what's happening today is Kazo against her catch. Um, I, I actually want to go back to Kazo beating Runa and maybe even just thinking, what, mm. what does this mean for Runa and, 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 and the bigger picture for him? Uh, let's get Owen because I know Owen's going to be leaving any minute. So, Owen, where, where are you with Runa right now? Good question. I, I feel like that loss got overshadowed by everything else crazy happening that yeah. day. Like, I, I feel yeah. like the next day, like almost no one was talking about it. And, and then there was a weird... Was that on the crazy day, day, was it, Owen? That that, that I, assault I, happened? Because I, I think okay, Pagula's so. got overshadowed too as well. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, it's not a great loss, right? Second round, um, I think. Yeah, he's not where he needs to be in best of five. Um, I, like yeah. if if I were him, I would just like drill that endurance constantly. That's the thing he has to improve. I think the game is in a healthy place. But but then we also re remember last year he went for like months without winning a match after Wimbledon. Um, yeah, m maybe he's just kind of out of sorts in general. I don't know. He did that the year before as well. After he beat Sitsipas at the French in twenty two, okay. and then lost to, lost to Rude. He then lost seven matches in a row. God. And then he had another horrible streak last season after he reached the uh, the Wimbledon quarterfinal. Right. So and he's and he's got so many voices in his camp now, all such great coaches. And I'm just like, is he, <laughs> is he now? Is he now going to have too much input? That's kind of like so many because he's so talented and it seems like he can play any kind of game style. I just yeah. still don't think he knows what his identity is on a hard outdoor hardcore yet. He doesn't know how to play. It's yeah, like he's I, got too many tools at his disposal. I know what you mean, Jethro, right. with the with the setup and the, all the different voices there. But actually, I actually I know he's just lost fairly early in a Grand Slam. Um, but actually, I quite like the balance. That it feels like Seven Lute is probably going to be doing most of the heavy lifting. He's going to be there alongside him in the countries that Boris is not allowed into at the moment. Um, and. Um, He's probably going to be doing a lot of the coaching. Maybe Boris is going to be a, a sort of more of a consultant in a way, more of a mm -hmm. like, listen, I remember what happened for me on the day of the win the final. I don't know. I just, I feel, feel more as though he's sort of an overlord, if you like, uh, to the whole operation. And, and the thing is, though, Boris, and maybe Seven will be different, but Boris is not going to help, I don't think, 
get the fitness thing because that's that's the physical issue that, that he seems to have. By the way, we I've got uh, Azarenka of uh, the on my screen. If anything crazy happens, I'll immediately bring us to this match, and and we will have a bit more of a narrow focus on that um, uh, after this Runa discussion. But yeah, uh, uh, I just feel Owen. Oh, I'll get one more word from you on this. I just feel that the, the, the bigger thing with with Runa right now is this this physicality uh, in a Grand Slam. Yeah, I mean, it's best of five is a killer, I think, especially for young players. Like, how many times have we seen a pretty promising 18 to 20 year olds come up and we're like, oh, they're a dark horse to win this tournament. They could they could really push Djokovic. And then, you know, a set goes by and they're already cramping. Like, it's um, mm. it's not it's not easy. It, it takes a lot of work uh, to have, like, the five hour long endurance that you need. And I think that makes it all the more amazing what Alcaraz has done. Like he's already got that fitness. Um, I think he had it before he was 20. So um, I, I don't know. Call up Alcaraz's strength and conditioning coach, I guess my advice would be. Mm. And uh, yeah, th right. this, this was great. All I have to run, unfortunately. But Thanks, um, Owen. Yeah. Wonderful. See you uh, all soon, hopefully. Take care, Owen. See you soon. Good to see you, mate. A couple of game points here for um, Azarenka. And she's got it after that volley um, from mm. the Azarenka goes wide. Um, but yeah, so Kazu Hercatch. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, yeah, I hope Hercatch. Because we focus so much on Runa, but um, sorry, yeah, that's my fault. Uh, to be fair, he but, um, was he was brilliant. I only caught. I mean, I did have it on, but I kind of only caught flashes of the match. But he is he's really really talented, um, and I I think I might put Hubi on a upset upset watch for overnight. Okay. So you think Kazo might win this one? Uh, I think I think he's got a good shout. I think he's got the best chance of getting an upset on all the men's matches tonight. Mm -hmm. I just think that actually um, Hercatch's run has been a bit tricky until now, and he's come through some tricky assignments that actually um, I think today might be a little easier for him. But but um, did, did you say Jethro? You saw some of the Runa match? Yeah, plays. Yeah, and it's like he's. Pace with no fear, a lot of energy, really, really good ball striker, he's aggressive. I mean, like, it would seem like there was a lot of points where Runa, Runa didn't seem to put a foot wrong and he was just getting outclassed. So, yeah, I liked what I saw, but I mean, I think, did Damien predict her catch to win this? Uh, he's not made a call on this one, but I know he's been predicting her catch to fall almost every round. Or certainly there was one round where he said her catch is going out today and he didn't. It was the one where it was, was five. It to Pardon? Menzik. Yeah, Menzik, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Menzik. I knew, I, I knew, yeah, I knew, I knew he'd predict that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's um get to here because we've got um. I, I hope I'm not too far ahead or behind you guys. Uh, behind is actually okay. It's when I'm ahead, I don't want to spoil things. But love thirty here for um Azarenka on the Yastremska serve, and this is turning into a bit of an epic rally. Lovely volley there from Yastremska. Where am I in terms of your streams, uh, Andre? Am I ahead or behind you? A little bit ahead. Oh, sorry. What about you, Jeff? Oh, that's fine. Um, I am at. Sorry, the score's not on my. Uh, it's it's a replay right now. If I coach. When I was talking, okay. was I? Did I sound like close to you, far ahead, or? Um, I'll be honest. I was reading a message from Owen. But, um, oh, okay. yeah, it's, uh, it's it's fifteen thirty. Well, I've got fifteen thirty, and Yastremska's about to serve. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Got a forehand return there from Azarenka. It was decent, but maybe could have been even better. Because oh, that's not good from Azarenka putting that forehand yes. in there. That's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the, the um, farthest behind you guys. Are you guys at thirty off? Yeah. 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 Where were you at? Is Azarenka winning? Is just... Azarenka win the Australian Open 2013? Where you are? <laughs> 13. <laughs> Good old days, no, so, not so much. But... She just yeah, hit just, the rubbish. I've just got. I've just got to when uh, Dominic Team won the US Open in 2020, so I'll catch up yeah. soon. There you go. Is this a match that you would like? That you that you enjoy reliving, Jethro? 2020 US Open final. Um, I could. No, I don't think either of them really do. Yeah, uh, like, I mean, it's his only Grand Slam victory, but wow. Yeah. 
I mean, to do that in front of no... Like, you shouldn't hear the racket falling on the ground when the player falls over in celebration after a Grand Slam final. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's just like... That's awful. COVID, co- yeah, COVID and injuries exactly. just ruined my, my boy's career. So, yeah, so if should just make an event where Dominic team just comes in, lifts the trophy, and the crowd just goes wild. Just like, yeah, that would be so sweet. Day. Yeah, who, maybe they're um, saving it for his the... retirement. Yeah, I mean, like I know Osaka won the final as well, but she's won. She's won plenty of others. She doesn't. She doesn't need the hero. She I mean, she can have one as well. Yeah. I'm sure, but she um, she had another three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is all we've got, and we'll ever get with team probably. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna say because we were talking about Cruz Hewitt earlier. Lindsay Davenport's son also played in juniors, but lost in round two a bit earlier on. Oh. So we've got we've, we're we're seeing Leo. We're seeing Leo Borg. We're seeing Cruz Hewitt. We're seeing Lyndon Davenport's son. It's wild. It's making me feel it's, old. I think it's funny. Yeah, I think it's funny to it see these like... um, all the legends yeah. um, children coming back on court because it's like I, they just got so much to live up to, and most of them don't really yeah. do well. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, it feels like what 2016 when. Hewitt was playing for Rare in his last Australian Open, and I was screaming Hewitt on from my uh, from my school dorm room. I was just watching it, watching that live uh, when I should have been doing some work. And obviously, he lost that because Hewitt's legs were kind of cooked by then. And it's just that doesn't feel like that long ago. And all of a sudden, we're watching his fifteen-year-old son playing juniors. It's wild. I think it's crazy that he would actually took a set off of Djokovic in one of those late late Australian Open. Mm. Yeah, that's a good, good match. Little career resurgence. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to dip out for a few minutes. I'll be back, so I'm not far away. I'm just going downstairs, and uh, yeah, give me two minutes, maybe five. You going for a run? Uh, no, that's about. I've abandoned the run idea. <laughs> uh, so, what match are you most looking forward to tonight? What, what match am I missing? No, which, which one are you like most looking forward to? Oh, or at okay. least is the most exciting to you? I think I've been looking forward to watch this match of Azarenkas, to be fair. Like, that's probably yeah. the one that I wanted to watch the most in terms of actual um, value, as in for the players themselves. Not that Azarenka and Yastrzemska aren't good enough, but I feel like I think it's going to be interesting to see. Well, unfortunately, the one that has like the most star power is probably is Vered Nori, unfortunately. But I'd mm-hmm. say I think Noskova's yeah. Vitolina could be a good one. Yeah, I think I it's think probably going to be one, one, one of the best matches of the day. Yeah. 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 Sadly, I'll probably one of the... yeah. yeah Sorry, I mean, I'll probably be able to wake up to. I'll probably be able to watch. A good amount of Alcaraz came out of it when I wake up for work, but mm. yeah, I mean, it's gonna, it's most of it. I'm gonna miss most of it, but I completely agree with your tweet about kind of being a bit depressed when the second week of the slam starts because it's, it's just so much less fun and it's just like, you know, yeah, at that point, you're just chasing the records like, who, okay, who's gonna win this? Like, instead of like, what's the most fun match I can watch right now, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like all my favorite players are gone, so <laughs> huge. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> last time, last time you and me spoke was uh, was when I jumped on your podcast, wasn't it? After Byers won the title in Cordoba you know, a year ago. Yeah, so I've been. Was I even in that podcast, or was it just Bunch? I don't I think even it was, remember. I think it was you and Bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Must have been. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, that was that was good fun. But yeah, I was gonna say Byers making the third round. Here and at the US Open back to back has pleasantly surprised me. But um yeah, it was weird. It was weird having a slam with no Diego, even if he does lose in the first round. It's like not even having him to watch in the first weeks. Crazy. Yeah. Diego is uh yeah. hopefully like he can get kicking uh, catch a second wind or something in his career. Like, but yeah. Yeah. At least That's why I'm allowed to go on swing. Yeah. Yeah, we can always expect him to like at least show up and try his all-time best um yeah 
I hope he can win a Buenos Buenos Aires at least once more in his career. Mm. I actually really want to go to that tournament, to be honest. Really, Buenos yeah, Aires is a really beautiful city. I've never been, but I've yeah. only seen a lot of pictures. So, yeah, one of my best friends is actually out there working abroad at the moment, and I said to go visit, but it's expensive. So, wow, you know, have you ever been to South America? No, uh, so I've been to Costa Rica. Oh, okay. Have you? Oh, I'm from Brazil, so. <laughs> nice. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I came from there. <laughs> nice. So do you like yeah. tend to root for the Brazilian players a bit more, or? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Except for maybe Wild at this point, but. Um, yeah. But not, Haddad not Maya for sure. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Like um, Thomas Bellucci back in the day. I used to I really liked him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought he was a really good player. It's unfortunately, he liked a bit of a tennis IQ at some points. But mm. I think he also, a lot of people just complain about the pressure um, of, you know, that pe Brazilian people put on their own players, um, which is really bad. Because it's like, oh, if you're, yeah. if you're winning, everything is awesome. But as soon as he loses once, he's trash. I guess absolutely it seems to be quite on social media. Yeah. Yeah. It seems to be quite a South American thing because mm. they're so passionate. Like, I know Schwartzman's had that a lot. I know Yar Yari's got so much support, which is great. I love whenever he wins and all the comments on like ATP are like, greetings yeah. from, and then they just say some random place, <laughs> random place in the world. Um, I mean, I guess it's difficult for Brazilians because we could, like, Kuwait had such an incredible career. Yeah, and it's yeah. very tough to live up to that. I do like the look of uh, Foneshka, though. Oh, I think so. I think he's. I want to see him playing um, ATP level tournaments. Um, he's been mm. played a challenger. He did really well. Um, but I want to see if he can transition to like, ATP two fifties and see if he can, you know, face some bigger names. Yeah, and like, like Federer must have seen something in him because he's the only other person signed with them running apart from Shelton and Shrontek, so wow, yeah. Suggests to me that they, they've seen something. Mm hmm I think it's also uh, might see some potential marketing wise um in mm -hmm. South America for him, which I hope he's right. Um but yeah. Yeah. Also don't look now but yeah Strem's is already a breakup. <laughs> yeah I've actually Got well, fifteen thirty now. It was like thirty, but according yeah, to the uh, yeah, go on. No, yeah, so you go on, you go on. I uh, was gonna say that according to the, the the score in the in front of me in the stream, it's thirty all. So yeah, it's quite it's quite not because obviously that's like proper live. As live yeah. live as it could possibly be, and then like I'm just slightly behind. Yeah, I'm um I'm on a VPN and using a to catch the live stream from Australia, which is free. So right. nice. Um, so that's probably what's putting me quite a bit behind. Mm -hmm. Or about to see you right now. 30 all just okay. served the fish. just just uh yeah. missed the first serve oh something to look forward to though you got a break oh yeah, nice have you got any preference on this match as a rank i think mm. i really want to i really want her to win another slam <laughs> I think that'd be, it'd be really cool if she won the Australian Open again, to be fair. Yeah. That was a great return. Wow. Yeah. Did you happen to watch uh, Deminor versus um, Rublev? No, I was really sad to miss it. I woke up. Mm. in time for it and then i fell back asleep and then i missed the whole match oh <laughs> really 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 annoying <laughs> um 
<laughs> disappointed it finished on a bagel. Uh, I I had predicted Dimonor to win that match before the tournament, but yeah, Vrublev was playing great. To be fair, yeah, yeah, Did I thought this was it? probably one. Of, I didn't. I just saw the highlights, the mm. extended one eight minutes. But from what I seen, I just kept thinking. I I think at the end, like the last two sets, it was like Rublev thinking like. Deminar is just doing the same thing. <laughs> I'm just gonna change yeah. it up. Yeah, I just, I could just, I did think that it could really kind of be a bit of a matchup problem for Deminor because Rublev just hits, it just hits bigger than him. Obviously, Deminor moves amazingly well, but yeah. Rublev's so good at hitting with a lot of power but not missing. Mm, yeah. And yeah, I just think he can just overwhelm people. But then I just yeah. checked his head to head with Sinner. The only two times he has beaten Sinner is by retirement. Wow. That's not good. Mm. Yeah. And like, you know, one of them was that French Open match where Sinner was crushing him. And this was before, this was before post puke Sinner, you know, <laughs> when yeah. Sinner threw up in Beijing and then all of a sudden became outrageous yeah. again. Um, and still, Sinner just completely dominates him in the head-to-head. And if Sinner's even better now, Rublev's had two five-setters. Sinner hasn't dropped a set. Hatchinov gave him a good match and still wasn't that close to dropping a set. So, yeah, that yeah. should be three or four for Sinner. He's back. Did I miss anything in... Azarenka Yastremska. You missed two breaks. Oh, really? I was I was just thinking, oh, they're still on serve. Um, yeah. Hmm. Some very nice ball striking so far. There's a question about Kazo, and I, I don't know if you, you feel um, well-placed to answer it or not, uh, Jethro, but maybe you did kind of cover a little bit about him anyway in in what you said five, ten minutes ago about his win over over Runa being very impressive. But it's about his style of play and, and how you would describe him. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to try and blag through this because I haven't... I only caught some of his matches against Runa. So I would say pretty aggressive. Mm -hmm. I guess great ball striker isn't really a style of play. That's just a characteristic, but he is a great ball striker. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say he's aggressive. I mean, he was really taking it to Bruno. He wasn't just... I think if, like, you know, he, he was passive against Bruno, he would have um, probably would have lost. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was his aggression that won that for him. So that's all I really could tell from him when I saw it. But, yeah. Do you play tennis, Andre? I'll, actually... I'll let you finish, Jethro. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, my, I, was, my... I was, I was, I was waffling by the end. To be honest, um, you guys go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I used to play. Um, I don't play much anymore because it's just expensive to you know. Yeah. Um, living in Canada, is, there's not a lot of indoor courts. Um, the ones that there are just very expensive to go into and you know book courts and get memberships and whatnot. But yeah, the other unfortunate things that. I'm not great, but I am. I have a good understanding of the technique, and I, I like to improve myself. And I feel I, I feel myself as like being a, a decent player, which makes it hard to find other decent players to play against. So um, it's it's kind of I got tired of like teaching other people how to play. So yeah, gotcha. Uh, there was a not, not un unfortunate fall really. there for yes, but I'm skipping. Yeah. Unfortunate fall there for Yastremska, but she does seem to be okay. Yeah, she didn't really roll her, run. her ankle or anything. So. No. No. What about you, Jethro? Oh, he's gone. He'll be back in a second. I play a bit, but as you say, with tennis, it's always tricky to find someone on the same level. I mean, you, you don't want to make your opponent feel awkward or bad because they're so much better than you. But as you say, you also mm. don't want to give someone a tennis lesson. Um, and to be honest with you, it, it, it kind of, like, it, it, as I say, it works both ways. I mean, 
I had people that sort of said they feel bad. And I'm like, no, it's, it's okay. You don't want to be doing it all the time. But also people can get quite annoyed, you know, that, you, oh, you don't want to play. And I was like, well, it's just, it's no good for either of us. You know, if, if, if we play normally, it's no good for either of us. But it's not being um, arrogant. I mean, there's dozens of players, millions of players that are much better than me. And and that's fine. And I, I, I don't want to play them either. Um if you play someone slightly better than you, yeah, that's great. If you play someone, if you yeah. play someone equal level or even slightly worse, that's fine. Of course, that can always work. Um, but it's no good for either of you if um, if there's a big gap. Um, yeah, I like so um, I like to challenge myself. So if we get if we get at the same level, if the other player is like slightly better, I think it's good. If they're slightly less good, I think it's all right too because. Uh, I know I'm not gonna win it every every, every time. Um, so if as long as like a base the same base level, I think it's good. So um, we gained yeah, a subscriber when, when I when I left the screen left the stream. We we gained a subscriber, so maybe I should spend more time off screen than <laughs> than on it. Um, Azarenka here has love fifteen on on the Astrodome. So they've both threatened each other's serves. I mean, they're both broken once. Um, I mean, as it was highlighted before, Azarenka's return is as good as it's ever been. And yeah, she does sort of like it here in Melbourne. Like, oh, there's a lovely forehand there. I love it when you hit a, uh, a one down the line like that and it's hit on the rise, taken so early like that. Beautiful. You are hitting lots of forehand winners when you're playing, John. It is the side that I'm more likely to hit winners off, that's for sure. Uh, I tend to play on clay, which obviously means there's a slightly different dynamic. You probably there's not quite as many winners as there would be on other surfaces, but it, yeah, it's the, it's the side I'm more comfortable on. But I will say this my backhand, which was just shocking two years ago, let's say, is is it's okay now, but there's not so many backhand winners, put it that way. I just just stay solid on the backhand. I, I think my defense is okay though. I I I mm. I'm not that fast, which is what you need to have a good defense, but I think maybe anticipation, getting my racket on the ball and, and trying to get some good depth on it. Yeah, that's 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 okay. Uh serve is not great because I don't really have the height. Um so yeah, all sorts of things going on there. Yeah, no worries, Andre. You're 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 good for another five minutes. That's great. We've got some break points here, Andre. Um for Azarenka, so this could be a, a timely moment both in the match and also for your departure. Are you an Azarenka fan, by the way, Andre? In terms yeah, of style I wasn't. Yeah. I became a bit of an Azarenka fan because of the circumstance of the fact that back in when she was number one, she was essentially the only player who could play um, Serena Williams properly. At that oh, okay. Time. Um, what do you mean? What do you mean by was, properly? Every every other player just got blasted off the court. Uh, and then um, it was the only challenge that Serena Williams ever faced, I, as as far as I, the matches that I could watch. Um, and yeah, like you know, it was so much so that <clears throat> they played two fantastic matches at the U.S. Open as well. I think for two years in a row, <clears throat> which Serena Williams, Williams won both of them. But um, it was it was good. So at the time, I just I was just cheering for her to be able to you know give Serena a, a run for her money just so that I could watch some good tennis in that regard. Not that, I, not that I thought that watching Serena was bad. I just really wanted good competition for her, you know? Yeah, yeah. Which I thought was a little bit missing because she was so good at the time. And Azarenka has got Especially a break. Especially on the serve. Azarenka's yeah. broken yeah. now for 4-3. Um, double fault to, to get the breakaway. <laughs> yeah, right. So we both, or you both think Svitolina's a bit vulnerable today, right? From what I understood from earlier against Noskova. Or she there's a bit of Noskova fun, chance. But it's, it's got the potential to be a very good match. You're putting words in yeah, my mouth, John. Sorry, yeah, I, I, you're right. I, I did. Vulnerable was too strong. But, um, I say her catch is potentially vulnerable. Yeah, okay. But, yeah. And that's very, very kind of ghosty, I must say. John's John's ego point. John's John's going to yeah, go was, show that to all the Brazilian girls out out of the bar. I was fine with showing that weekend. on the screen. There's a video out there that I posted as a short uh, of, of comparing my backhand to uh, to Rafa's actually. 
Let's see if I can find it. It's oh, yeah, I remember one. that. Oh, I couldn't tell which was which, personally. No, of course, it's it's very, very <laughs> similar. Both on the clay, albeit ones in I Germany. Thought, well, ones. You've obviously had very intense coaching from Tony Nadal. There's no way you can be that good <laughs> that way. Let's see, I can find this video. Yeah, it's just comparing our, our backhands. And, yeah. This is where my backhand, you should have seen it, but it's not great in this this footage either, but it was even worse um, uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> Did you hit? I mean, it's not terrible, to be honest. This you actually have a bit, you're actually more similar to Medvedev than Nadal in your yeah. <laughs> now that's that's okay, and I'm okay with that comparison in terms of being a mm. little awkward and flat. Anyway, if you saw me playing talking to the forehand, actually, um, in particular, you would certainly call it flat. <laughs> the backhand tends to be not flat because it's it's not aggressive enough, so I get plenty of net clearance normally. Um, and just hopefully on clay in particular, the backhand just gives me a chance to sort of stay in the rally, um, keep things going and, and give me, give me a forehand, hopefully on the next shot. The, yeah, I actually told an opponent, Andre, funny enough, I told an opponent, what are you going to do to, this is somebody that I was beating regularly The the gap wasn't so big that, that the matches were boring. We'd often be close matches, but like I was winning all the time. So I actually... I actually was starting trying to give him tips to, to beat me because I wanted to, mm. you know, get better. And, and, and I think at first he was a little surprised, but um, I, I told him my reasoning and, and then also, um, yeah, I was like, what are you? And he said, I don't know. I said, well, you must think about this. You've got to think about what am I going to do to win this tennis match today? You know, whether you, you know, I, I think I told him, for example, I said, there's not much difference between your first serve and your second serve. And he said, well, that's not a, a good point. I said, it's not, it's not about that. Your first serve is what you might think of as being better than your first, the second serve, because it's faster. But it's not giving me any more problems. So the double faults are almost a waste of time. You know, you may as well just throw in a couple of second serves, to be honest with you, because you're giving me some pace to work with on your first. So this is the kind of thing I was talking about. And I also pointed out a particular area of the court where I hate the ball being, let's say. And uh, yeah, he started hitting those spots and he's got better as well. And we're, we're much closer, albeit that I still have the upper hand, but it is, it is much closer than it was say a year ago. We play on carpet in Germany, by the way, indoor carpet. Mm. Wow. What, what's the surface in Canada, Andre? I guess it's hard court, right? Yeah, it's hard courts. So mostly um, outdoor hard, but yeah, it's like lacking a bit of that indoor influence so that we can play in the winter. But uh, it's funny. I think I think uh, tennis fans outside the UK assume all Brits grow up playing on grass and are all really good. Oh on grass. yeah, right. Yeah, I get about ninety nine percent of Brits who play tennis now and again have never played on grass in their life. Actually, I did play on grass once, and it was in Australia. Not, not in England. <laughs> it yeah. must be really expensive to play on like real real grass, right? Yeah, like there's like, regularly you know, very, very posh, very expensive tennis clubs you can join. But uh, yeah, in the US, and I think they might have some as well. No, some grass. I, I feel like there might be some posh grass courts in the US, just from the movies oh. in the seventies, where you just see these posh groups playing on grass in the in the US, but. <clears throat> So what's most most common in the UK? Is it clay or hard? It's just hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. Variations on the hardcore though, Jethro. I mean, I've seen sort of kind of a softer, like I don't know how to describe it, a sort of a, a spongier hardcore. I've seen that a bit in, in, I, in the I mean, I always kind of thought that wasn't that was yeah, but it's not exactly surface diversity that the LTA are trying to implement no. is what what the tennis club could afford. It's probably a cheaper version, yeah, yeah. As a rank of whatever, always, whatever we can afford that isn't going to break a player's knees. Well, yeah, the, the LTA being like, well, they want to pre prepare our up and coming players for Indian Wells, Australian Open, US Open. So let's have a nice spread, you know, a nice spread of hard courts across the UK. 
So, Azarenka 5 3, a strength to serve and to stay in it. Go on, Andre. Oh, I was going to say, I, st I, I still think that having clay courts is probably some of the best things that you can do, unless you play, you train people to play on hard courts properly. Because like, I feel like that the, the recipe that stopped working for a long time in the US was the big serve, big forehand type of guy, mm -hmm. which, like, which is just stopped working because people are just like defending way too well and you know how like spaniards are always coming out like on top because they're playing aggressive on clay and i think that's probably the best way to do it. i think clay course probably some of the best like instruction like because you can't really you cannot really get away with you know just hitting hard you have to have good technique yeah. and like blend for your for your rallies it's bad if you get too defensive you kind of become just like a dirt baller but if you play aggressive, you can become like an Adal or Carlos Alvarez. In yeah, theory. I wish there was more clay in the in the UK. I've never played on it. I've played on like synthetic clay, but not real clay. Mm. Unless in like tennis clubs in the UK as well, they'll say, oh yeah, we've got clay courts. And then it's fake clay. No, but you see, you don't, have, you don't have clay courts. It's like saying, oh yeah, I've got grass courts and it's just your, your local school's AstroTurf, you know, it's yeah. infuriating. <laughs> Clay is the surface I probably, in fact, not, not probably, definitely play on the most. Mm. Are there any good ones in the UK, John, that you know about? Um, I don't, I don't know if they're good, but I think they're okay. There's some in West London. I remember playing on not not West London as in oh. Wimbledon, but West London, like Middlesexy, somewhere around there. Um, I can't remember okay. the name of the club. But I played on hard there actually, but they do have uh, just as many clay courts there. But I couldn't tell you the exact name of the club without searching for it. A um, couple of game points here for Jastrzemska to make it 5-4. Um, but yeah, but in Germany, it's it's clay. Or as I say, in winter, indoor carpet is quite common. And funny mm -hmm. enough, I, this, this, I can com make a good comparison because this guy I play regularly, um, we play, we've probably played, let's say we played 100 times, 60 or 70 on clay and probably 20 or 30 on, um, on, a, on, a, on an indoor carpet. And actually, I have a similar result against him on both surfaces. There's not not a big difference between the two. But I'm starting to wonder more recently, actually, if I may be a bit better on the indoor carpet. The flat forehand, for example, you know, bounces quite low and, and that's quite useful. My serve, which is just, just terrible anyway, is just made even worse on clay. But uh, on the indoor carpet sort of picks up a bit of speed. And, and again, because it's quite flat, perhaps it's okay. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm just wondering if maybe, so maybe grass might be all right for me. I return well anyway, which works on both surfaces, but I'd love to play on grass someday to see how it is. Yeah. It might drive me I nuts. Really, yeah. it is, but... I really struggled because I, so I only really ever played on hard courts. So, so yeah, I mean, I was in this random, like proper like paid tournament as well. It's a long story of how I managed to get into it. But I got drawn against this like full time coach in round one. I saw him turn up and all these like kids with these massive racket bags coming to support him. And I was like, oh Christ, this is going to be embarrassing. Um, and yeah, I lost six of six love, obviously. I was one of the first matches of the day as well. And I was looking on the court next to me and could see the score was six love, five love. And it was about to be five love to the other guy. And I was like, as long as I'm not the first to lose, then I'll consider that as a win. And then yeah he lost and then i saved a match point by hitting like this crazy down the line one handed backhand winner i was like yeah come back on and then lost <laughs> the next point but i was like okay didn't didn't become the first to lose but i, I just couldn't get used to the skid i was so right used to the ball bouncing and predicting and expecting it just to bounce normally because from hard course the, mm. the skid on, uh, on, just on grass yeah it was on grass and so the skid mm. just kept on um you know catching me out you, yeah yeah and i played was... the consolation singles and i got drawn against the guy who pushed the fifth seed to a third set tie break and <laughs> lost six i got a game off him at least and then there was one time where i lobbed him and came in to close the, close down the net and he just hit a through the legs winner right past me and i was just like <laughs> i'm gonna walk off the court now i think Oh, that's a not very nice forehand there uh, from Azarenka. Jethro-esque, maybe. I don't know um, uh, if I'm doing you a, a disservice mm, totally. there, Jethro. 
Um, have you seen that forehand from Yat Azarenka? No, I was too busy waffling on about getting. I know, but it, it might be you might be. It's love thirty on on my screen, but um, anyway, it was uh, yeah. it was Shank put it that way. Um, what I was going to say? Yes, yeah, so um, yeah, although sits past Shank's the backhand really, the forehand tends to be pretty solid. It does. It does sometimes shank the forehand, but he's trying so hard to run around the backhand that he <laughs> shanks the forehand. So Azarenka here serving for the set, but she's love 40. She's rushing a bit. Just because she's won the tournament before, um, I'm kind of with everybody. I mean, I like Victoria. She's fine, but I'm kind of like, for example, Svitolina, I probably would be supporting her against um, Azarenka because I think that story, if she was to get to the final, would be just incredible. But anybody, mm -hmm. basically. Kim Wen Zheng, maybe. I, I like Kim Wen Zheng, but maybe slightly less because I think she's going to have dozens of opportunities anyway. Um, yeah. So she, her time will come, whether it's in the next few days or not, I don't know. But, um, yeah, that's a, a good depth there from Yastrems. Wow. That, that led. Yeah, that was, that was really, really high quality. Yeah. Yeah, it was, and now um, Azarenka's complaining. But yeah, with Zheng, I just I want I want to I want her. And, you know, I want to think that potential will be fulfilled one day. But I'm still not seeing it yet. The draws opened up for a bit a bit here. Obviously, with Eager going mm. out in particular, um, so that may help her get to at least the semis. Who would Zheng play after Dodin? Kalinskaya slash Paolini. Yeah, Kal Kalinskaya. Okay. Or yeah. Okay. So yeah. She would fancy her chances there. Then, of course, in the semi final, you know, Azarenka or, or Svitolina. Right, guys, I, I, guess like, so yeah, I like anyway. that lineup. Go on, Andre. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll, I'll leave you guys right here. Uh, I was hoping for the set to be over before. Yeah, I, I sensed that. Yeah, the, I sensed the, that. The, the, the break came back too fast. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. All right, but, yeah, happy streaming. Brilliant, wonderful. Thanks for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you again soon. All right, see you see guys. You Cheers. Right. And now Yastremska's got a nice little lead on her serve here as well, 30 love. Forty-six minutes on the clock. It's quite cool today, at least. At least the shade must be helping these these players. I'm seeing a bit of chat on Twitter about uh as a rinker's first serve percentage. Okay. And it's shocking, shockingly low, but I'm gonna go get the exact percentage now from the web from the ATP Australian Open okay. website. Do it. Um, right, you mean go. she's not getting many in or she's just not winning winning the points on her first serve? I think she's not getting any in. Who who uh, did you see so tweeting by the way? Uh just a few people. Um okay. Oof, yeah, it's thirty-two percent right now. It was twenty-four percent for that game, though. And then she's Someone winning thirteen percent of her first serve points. Someone called Shank on Twitter no, as that's well. Is, uh... Sorry, that's okay. Yastremska. Who's um? Let's talk about here. Yeah. This makes no sense. So Yastremska is winning thirteen percent of her first serves and seventy-one percent of her second serves. That's bizarre. <laughs> oh, Badossa, shout out. Yeah, uh, but what I actually I need to read that tweet again. Um, as I can struggle in the middle, was Badossa would feast on it. Yeah, well, maybe, but um, Badossa's not playing today, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you, not, I mean, you didn't see that? Bit, did you? For sharing the tweet. It's just because I was quickly tweet <laughs> looking, searching for Azarenka stuff on on uh, Twitter, and I like the name Shank. So. Yeah, it's a system. I'm sure it's not a Sitsapas fan account though. That would have been perfect. Yeah. But. Maybe things are looking a little bit better for Victoria now. And in, I tell you what, um, uh, Yastremska had a good advantage in this, a good lead in this service game. So 
to now be looking a bit vulnerable is um yeah it's interesting first coffee of the night <laughs> so i'm hoping to do an all nighter tonight have you so got I'm anyone really... on for the other matches yeah yeah um damien is going to do um uh, our polish nationalist damien is going to do uh, her catch um nice. bringing his bringing his cross and and all the other sort of things that they have in poland i don't know to bring luck to their guy um and we'll do ketsmanovic against um alcaraz with a combination of myself, Damien, or Vanch, all three, maybe. I mean, you. I know you said you're going to be up in the morning and try and catch some of that. Yeah, I've got. I've got work, but I'll try and tune in. I mean, yeah. Look, if it's, are you working it's from hard. home or, or, or working? Yeah, yeah, home? working from home. We've got me and my flatmates got a new uh, got a new TV the other day, and it's oh. it's a beaut. It was on sale, so uh, watching the tennis on there. Is your flatmate a tennis fan as well? uh just there's three of us uh one of them quite likes it the other one's okay about it but um he kind of just asks me what's happened like he watched the Wimbledon final with me he likes he's, 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 he likes Alcaraz a lot it sounds like um, a classic tennis fan actually this the tennis uh by the way Azarenka is broken for six five and we'll we'll focus on her as she serves trust serve it out again but actually I don't know maybe I'm I'm pigeonholing your your friend or your flatmate here but but the, 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 the probably 80%, 90% of tennis fans are not like you, me, and, and, and certainly not like Damien. 90% um, of tennis fans know who won Wimbledon. They have a favourite. They tune in it maybe for another random slam just because they're channel hopping at some point. They're like, oh, okay, the Australian Open's on right now. And mm -hmm. they probably just catch a few results on the, oh, the morning radio, you know, one morning says, oh, and uh, Rafa Nadal has won the French Open again. Oh, okay, yeah, he always wins the French. Oh, and Federer's oh, good on grass, okay. Do you know what I mean? That's, that. <laughs> maybe I'm being harsh to your flatmate, but do you know what I mean? That's the average tennis fan, right? Well, I, I, this is the thing. I think there's a difference between someone who likes tennis and someone who classes himself as a tennis fan. I think tennis fans are probably a bit, quite a bit more Okay, yeah, today. so maybe I'm, that's, I'm describing someone who likes tennis, yeah. Yeah, but I say someone who likes tennis, you kind of rely on having a flatmate like me or um, or just sort of seeing news. Yeah, they're, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't say someone's a tennis fan if they don't. You don't get it in other if, so, if someone says, oh, yeah, I love tennis, um, yeah, Federer's still doing really well, isn't he? I've had that yeah, before. Right. Yeah, I had that before yeah, the yeah. pub. And I'm like, yeah. this part of Guinness will be going all over you if you don't shut up soon. <laughs> I've had I've had people, by the way, and okay, they're not professing to be a fan or even saying they like support. But I've had I, I I get people that I know get confused between Novak and Rafa and and even to some extent mm. Roger. Um, it's funny because like, like you'll like... say something about Rafa for some. Is that, is that the one who wasn't allowed into Australia because of the fact you know it's like that? That's how <laughs> far off they are. You know, once someone said to me recently, he thought that Rafa was Brazilian. Actually, funny enough, cracky. Anyway. Well, so, like some, yeah, I mean. I get the vibe with some people as well who say they like tennis. I'm like, oh yeah, Djokovic is still absolutely dominating. They're like, um, I think I've heard of him. I was like, he's like <laughs> the best sportsman in, on the planet and has been for a while. How have you sort of heard of him? Like, <laughs> oh, it drives me mental. Terry, are you an Azarenka or Yastremska fan today? Or in, in general, um, looking at the, the players left in the women's draw terry who are you uh, rooting for um i know who terry roots for and doesn't root for on the atp side but um i'm intrigued to know who he is uh, rooting for on the women's oh, side who's who are terry's faves and non-faves on the atp side oh terry is you test your knowledge john terry wanna, terry, wanna... terry makes me seem impartial that's how um <laughs> uh much of a fan is i rafa and therefore by proxy Good man yeah of course but by, by proxy therefore he supports other players that are playing novak and so often it ends up being <laughs> carlos or, or yannick or whoever but it's it's rafa um yeah a lot. oh so he's rooting for azarenka um okay he he also ribs me because i i i he just tuned in for like three of my tournament predictions last year and they happened to be three tournaments that i think i predicted sabalenka to win two of which ended up being correct but i think yeah, I, I did. I think I, I think I predicted her to win the US Open. I didn't predict it for Wimbledon. I went for Rabakina for Wimbledon. So oh, I was going to say, was one of them Madrid? Yeah. I so think I, I think I went for her in in like, off the top of my head. I mean, I was doing for 
pretty much all the 1000s and all the the slams last year i was doing the, the pre-tournament bracket draw <laughs> thing and i was posting the post them online mm -hmm. and stuff and calling myself nostradamus particularly after the australian open because i had sabalenka to win i had yeah. sabalenka to win that and i had Djokovic and Sitsipas in the final. Although Djokovic Sitsipas in the final wasn't a huge shout once you looked at the draw and yeah, that was quite an obvious. That yeah, yeah. Wasn't making that but Sabalenka to win was a good one. By the way, we've got a break point now for Yastremska, so Azarenka can't get this done. Um, may I lock in my ATP Madrid winner now? Oh yeah, of course you can. Early. I mean, it's a bit wild to go five months. It's in a, sure. it's a very it's gonna sound like a very outside shout, and you can clip it. Yeah. And yeah. when when the Madrid result happens, embarrass me on social media because it's not gonna happen. But uh -huh. I've got Nicholas Yari winning it this year. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. It was his yeah. uh, Geneva, Clay, Geneva run. Big server in, in Madrid. Altitude. Work. Altitude. Altitude. Yeah. yeah. I just I, I just think he's a top five contender there. Yeah, and he's been gradually going up and up the, the rankings, and he's he's doing well across all surfaces. Azarenka does mm -hmm. save that break point, by the way. Um, cool. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good shout. If it's if the draw's nice to him, you know, and he, he doesn't get a horrible sort of second or third round opponent. Fingers crossed, I'll be in Madrid again this year. Oh, that'd be nice. Um, yeah, I've got I've got the. I think you never know. You might upset someone along the way, but I think I've got that Iberian Peninsula sort of in the pocket, really, in terms of. Um, Estoril, Barcelona, Madrid, and then also Davis and Billie Jean King Cup. Uh, I applied yes. for all five of those last year, and I got all five. And and I'm, I remember as well talking to the person who's in charge of uh, the accreditations, and she was like, "See you in Madrid." So this is in where I saw her in Fantastic. Malaga in, in November. So yeah, yeah. I was locked in. Uh, so you still haven't heard back on the uh, golden swing yet, have you? No. But I, 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 I've, I've checked it. I'm checking every day. The Rio one says, uh, well, funny enough, in English, it says the 2023 uh, accreditation process is now over. It's too late to apply. Uh, but if you switch mm. to Portugal, so it's 2023. So they've not updated it. The 2024 one in, in sorry, the, the Portuguese uh, version of the website says we'll be updating you briefly or it's very soon for the uh, for the 2024 accreditation process. So just super right. late, just classic tennis. Um, and re I've applied for Argentina and I'm still waiting to hear back, so we'll see. But fingers crossed, I'll get one or both. I mean, Rio is the one I want most because it just saves me. I'm not going to be having to travel for that one. Whereas Argentina, I, um, obviously, there'll be some traveling involved. Yeah, how long are you in Brazil for? Uh, on and off until March. Nice, yeah. Is that what, what are you there for? Just so like... learn a bit of Portuguese, fun. have a bit of fun, yeah. yeah. Very nice, yeah. uh, but also I'm 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 hoping to do the Rio Open and there's a few other things going on too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. <clears throat> As a ranker again, back to Juice. Really doesn't doesn't want to win this set, does she? But she also doesn't want to lose it. Well, right, she's had to save a few break points too. <laughs> With every break point that she saves, I I, I feel like she's going to win the set, but it doesn't always work out that way. Oh, I like that Nicholas, I like that Nicholas Shawy one. There's a lot of logic behind that. Uh, um, yeah, I just I remember saying it a couple of weeks ago to one of my colleagues who's also really big on his tennis, and just think like yeah, like his he beat Casper in the Geneva final last year, which is also altitude. I, I Santiago, I think, do you think that, yeah. that feels like it could? I mean, I lived in Santiago, so perhaps I should know. And I know Santiago is surrounded by mountains, uh, the city itself, and it's inland. Um, it feels like it could be at some kind of altitude as well. I mean, and he I won, won it last year, and he won Santiago, exactly. Yeah, he did. Yeah, uh, that was a crazy tournament. Actually, yeah, I don't... Pick me. Carlos is getting it again. Yeah, see, Carlos really is amazing in Madrid, so it's kind if of you, tough. If you become a member, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you tuning in, uh, Azarenka saves another break point. Um, uh, if you become a member, you can um, get to hear Damien, myself, maybe another person, but I think it's just Damien and I, talking about Nicholas Shawi uh, just after he won Santiago last year. So we did a, a members-only show. Uh, on Nicholas Shawi, and there's plenty. We got a new member right at the beginning as well. Uh, as soon as I tuned in, 
someone uh, called Julian Paolo Mendoza uh, became a member, so that's great. Oh, wow. What about that for a return? If you haven't seen it yet, Jethro, my she goodness. Missed it. Oh, she, she missed it. She missed it. <laughs> <laughs> she, <laughs> one of those where you just really, the volume up helps. But I thought I thought she'd landed that. Wow. I mean, it was big. Yeah, that was, uh, too was big in the end. very, very well struck. Yeah, this. I mean, if look, if Yari, I'm doing my tournament bracket and I see Carlos Alcaraz waiting for him in the quarterfinals. Yeah, right. Or even upset. earlier, if he's, if he's outside the top it's, 10, Jerry. Yeah. Third round, as long as he is on the opposite side of the draw, I could maybe see him winning the final against Alcaraz. But I like it because normally I'm like five months before tournament, but I just like that. The, I do like the logic behind it. And yeah. Um, yeah. Oof. That was a great return. Was another oh. yeah, it was a big return, and, and it, it, she reaped the reward because suddenly she's in charge of the point thereafter. And did her coach yeah. just try and whistle with his fingers and completely mess it up? Because <laughs> that, did, that, that yeah. did not look successful at all. No. <laughs> I might get a slightly slower scoring system up. Let's see if I can find one because it feels like it's a few seconds ahead. Mm. What do you use for live scores? I, I mean, I'm now going to switch to Google, although Google does it. I was just using the Australian Open one. The Australian Open one aesthetically looks quite good. The I'm always on flash score. I think if it looks like my most... Bad, it's quite fast, if that like makes if sense. Like, like, yeah. I was going to say, like, if like my phone and my laptop compiled the website I've visited the absolute most in the last 10, 12 years, flash score would be miles ahead of everything. Oh really? Okay. In, like including like YouTube, Twitter, like I, I literally always have it open on my phone. Like even in the off season, I'll occasionally check it for like exhibition scores. So set point as a ranker, uh, set point number two. Uh, second serve is decent, but she's gone long on the backhand. I mean, it was decent, but Yastremska, who's really having a nice, uh, a lot of fun on the return. Asked us as a anchor a question, but one I expected um, Victoria to answer and then be in the rally at the very least, but she didn't answer it and she hit it long. We're over an hour now. Juice. If Victoria doesn't win this set, then um, she'll be even more disappointed than normal having had these chances. Drop shot here from Victoria. Oh, lovely, Yastremska. Very nice. Lovely. We're going to get the whole handshake or lack of at the end of this match, aren't we, again? Oh, gosh, yeah. Thankfully, people on Twitter don't seem to make as <laughs> big an issue of it as they seem to have to do every week last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true, um, true. But still. I mean, you'll see Kostiak had her say on Twitter earlier today. Yeah, I, I maybe I <laughs> could have forensically gone through that and, 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 and had some opinions, but... Ooh, well, yes, the has got break, so we are going wow. to a tie break. And and that's again, an amazing turn win. point. Yeah. And, and again, he can't whistle. <laughs> and again, it's the I might tweet that, break. actually. Yeah, you might get uh, you might get a few uh, bit of traction on that one. Yes, Dremska is I, enjoying. I, I, I think I would need a, a screenshot, to be honest. I think we had six breaks of serve in that set, set, you know, so I think we had six holes and six breaks. Because there was a break at the beginning for each of them when I was when I was not here, and then Victoria was unable to serve it out twice, which obviously suggests that she also broke twice. Hold on, I'm going to try and take a screenshot of that. <laughs> Can you get a screenshot of it? Because um, I found that some channels now don't let you take screenshots anymore. So I'll take I'll be watching on my phone and I'll take a screenshot and it'll just go black. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, that happens a lot as well. Um, I've forgotten how to take a screenshot here now. She is indeed fighting, Terry. She is indeed. Oh, I don't think that's worked. He looks like a complete, norm, a complete moron doing that. Hmm. 
Yeah, we, we, we've so kind of... So, if you're still good wins been... this set, what do you think? Yeah. Oh, I mean, if you, I mean, Azarenka, though, is a, Expecting is a Azarenka very strong again. mental. She's a strong mental player. No, I mean, I mean, Yastremska, if, if this was just two players and you were just watching them without knowing anything about their histories and ages and, and all sorts of things, you would fancy Yastremska right now. I mean, mm. look at the way she's striking the ball in this rally, for example. Oh, but she's gone wild there. One all. Um, but because Azarenka is Azarenka, you know, two-time Australian Open champion, etc. cetera. Um, albeit a long time ago, but she likes it here last year's semi-final. I've gone for Azarenka to win this in three. So I guess I'm going for her in the tie break, but no, with z almost zero conviction. Mm -hmm. What about you? Um... I mean, look, Azarenka has been in this position before, hasn't she? So, yeah, she's very did see, experienced. Did you see any of her match against um, Ostapenko? No, I didn't. Um, but I did. She was, she was uh, I think we were talking about it last time I was on stream. Mm -hmm. And most people predicted Azarenka to win that, which I found a bit surprising. But Azarenka does win, does lead the head to head. So I predicted her to win. Was it on a, you mean on a talking tennis stream was this? Yes, this was when I came on. Maybe it was a different stream around the same sort of sort of 24, 48 hour period because I remember I think both Damien and Vanch went for um went for Ostapenko. And uh yeah. But that was she she was on top from start to finish. I mean Ostapenko mm. did have some chances maybe in the second set. I think it was a seven five, maybe in the second set. Um, so that does indicate it could have gone either way, but but Azarenka was the front runner pretty much throughout. Yeah. I couldn't get a screenshot, by the way. Did it go black when you were doing the screenshots? It, or you just... it did. And also, when I was trying to do the screenshot, you know, shortcut on the keys, the kind of the player kind of came up, you know, when it, like, you know, can click pause, fast forward. Oh, okay, like, okay. It, all in all, it was a complete disaster, and then she just slowed my laptop down and got me behind oh, the yeah, street. Right. So, to be honest with you, what I just do is just take a picture, of the, just a really lame old school way, but just take a picture of the TV sometimes. So. I know, I know, it just looks so grainy, but oh well. I know it does, yeah, but in a tweet, it's not the end of the world. Oh well, we might get a few more Wolf whistles. We'll see how the uh, the match pans oh, out. Oh, she wins this set. We're gonna, he's gonna. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get some cartwheels. Wow, lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, I thought I would just wait. He's done it again. <laughs> He's done it again. He's oh, the wolf whistle. Again. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, we 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 we're hopefully going to get a few more accreditations this year as well. I mean, in addition to the ones we did last year. So I hope we pretty much repeat all the tournaments did last year and then get a few more. And Indian Wells have indicated, in fact, they've emailed me to say we've got one, but we'll see. I, I, um, the reason why I'm still a bit sceptical is um, they said we've got one, but um, the communication, uh, yeah, we should have one. They, they said approved, mm. but they didn't say much more than approved, which I thought they'd give us a bit more specificity. Would you... Uh... Would you go to Indian Wells yourself? No, not for me. Send, no, not for me. But send, for, um, send, Vanch, send Vanch in. We'll have somebody. We'll I mean, have somebody there. He's doing so much by himself already, to be fair. But. Oh, yeah. Vanch, uh, listen, Vanch will hopefully continue to contribute to Talking Tennis as he already has. But, of course, he's got pretty much a full-time job to take care of right now. Um, yeah. Good for, so I mean, he, good for him. He's doing I'm, so well. I'm super, super happy that he's um, mm. still appearing as often as he is, which is like, three times a week or whatever. I mean, he was on last night, for example, and he may be on again tonight at some point, either for Ketsmanovic, um, Alcaraz or... Yeah, I mean, he's not quite close to my sort of consistency. On no, he's not. Of course but, he's yeah. not. I mean, you're, you're, you're just like a, a machine, like Djokovic-esque <laughs> uh, in, your, in your quality and regularity and consistency. Of course. Yes, Dremska, by the way. Many break up. Mm. Oh...
for three. Yeah, you see, I mean, this, you know, just, you know, about an hour or two ago, we were saying we thought Azarenka was the best bet for the final, and now it's like, hmm. I mean, I'm not changing my mind on that. Yeah. Um, okay, mini break well, restored. I'm not changing my mind on, on the prediction, but also the thought process. Um, you know, it's like it's like when you predict someone to win a tournament and they don't win it, or even if they go at first round. You know, you can look back and go, but did I do my homework? Did I come to that conclusion, predict and win the tournament for the right reasons? Yeah. And sometimes the answer is still yes. Sometimes it's like, ah, you know, like like maybe I put Von Drusova in my power rankings somewhere in that 10 and I probably shouldn't have done yeah. in hindsight. I got that wrong but, and I should have seen that. And uh, Azarenka, by the way, has got that break back and now got a mini break up herself. Mm. Um, no, know, she's, it's on, oh, yeah, she has, she has. Sometimes you can get that wrong. Yeah. But listen, Novak could lose to Fritz, okay? But predicting Novak to win in straight sets and putting Novak as your number one in your power rankings, you've not done anything wrong with your homework there, if that makes sense. It, it it could yeah. be a freak result, but that's that's how it is. Yeah, I mean, all this reminds me of is I know I brought up the other day, but still, when Damien in our end of year, end of 2022 review was saying that you weren't wrong if you predicted, oh, yeah, yeah, to be <laughs> well, yourself in the Australian different. Open final. That's different, yeah. yeah. No, I loved his logic because it was just absolute waffle and just like, yeah, yeah, completely yeah, yeah, kind of like. Yeah, Stremska yeah, just has the changing narratives. She's just got the ability to just take charge of the points within the first shot on the return. And she did it there. And then mm. Azarenka from that point is struggling, you know? Azarenka did well to keep the point going as long as she did. Five all. Do you reckon Fritz can no, make it no, slightly no, more competitive? No, no, no I didn't even let no. me finish my question. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, do you reckon he can make it slightly more competitive? Than normal against Djokovic after the way he played against this pass, or I do my best not to interrupt people, Jethro. Sometimes it happens accidentally, but on that occasion, I was ruthless. Uh, both yeah, like we're also about the best returners ever, and I mentioned Schwartz when he just burst out laughing. I'm gonna blame the beer on that silly outburst, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Azarenka goes long on the backhand, and we have, I think, the first set point set for Yetzel points. Yetzel. On her serve, which by the way, she'd probably rather be on the return for the set point, to be honest with you. Um, Terry said, uh, Did Morgan eat the whole jar of Vegemite? I did just see a clip on Twitter. I think she had one okay. spoonful and gagged. Yeah, Vegemite, of course, in Australia and the UK, it is um, Marmite. Yes, we love Marmite same over thing. here. It's the same, I think it's the same thing. It's it very similar. Oh, is it not? Is it, is it diff I, th I thought it was like exactly the same. I maybe it is. I, I mean, maybe. I'm not sure it tastes very similar. I so like yes, I could, I could eat. I could eat a whole jar of marmite easily. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Second serve here. What what could have been an ace um, must have gone wide. So second serve, Azarenka, one of the best returners in the game. Maybe she'll fancy her chances, but will she go as big as she might need to? Get bearing in mind the delicacy of the situation. Doesn't go that big. But it's not enough. It doesn't matter because uh, Yastremska dumps the shot into the net, Oof. and we're at six all. So we had three all on the changeover before. We had six all on the changeover. I think um, Yastremska might have forgotten that there's a changeover, or did she just decided to take the balls anyway. Um, I would have thought that they change ends, and then you collect the balls as you you enter the other side of the court. But maybe in her confusion, she's do you know what I mean? She's collected the tennis balls at one end of the, the net. And she's now got to carry them across. Whereas normally you would just go, okay, six all, change ends, and then get the tennis balls, I thought. Look, she's having to hold the tennis balls while trying to get a drink down. Anyway, maybe I'm making a bit too much of this. It's just a <laughs> tennis match at the end of the day. Uh, Terry says Vegemite's not the same as Marmite, by the way. All right. Well, he knows because I think Terry's British, but I certainly know he lives in Australia. Okay. Said Marmite's better. Yeah. Which also lends well, it itself to the suggestion that he's British too. But I they've be got wrong. like beef, beef bovril, which is also tastes just like Marmite as well. And that's that's also a hot drink too, right? Or it is a hot drink, beef bovril, right? Oh, cracky, probably. Good return, but it doesn't matter because Yastremska yeah, puts Lots it away. Forehand. This time with a little bit less venom and pure accuracy. And we've got the wolf whistling again. 
Christ. <laughs> but as a ranker now, <laughs> so I said to you before. What? Yeah, I know. The, so the, that return, by the way, that return was good, but so was the, the forehand winner there. Um, this time, as I said to you before, she'd probably rather have a set point on the return. And now she's got it on the return. So as a renker, needs a first serve. She mm -hmm. gets it. And she's got a winner there, Yesremska. Azarenka didn't do wow. enough. I mean, even that first serve. I said Azarenka needed the first serve, but the problem was it was too cautious, that first serve. Yeah. And Yesremska wins the set. Takes the first set. Right, now it's over, I'm going to rewind and take it. Try and take as good a photo of her coach. Trying to One hour, 14. This could end up being pretty epic. Mm. Azarenka's going to go off court. The sun is now beating down. I did say earlier on that there was some comfort there because of the shade, but now it's um it's beating down. I don't think that there's any reason to be concerned from Azarenka's point of view in terms of this this off-court break. I think Yastrzemska is going to follow suit just to change the outfit, etc. And mm -hmm. Yastrzemska is indicating that too. Yeah. Take your, take your picture of the wolf whistle. We'll take a quick uh, break and we'll see you again in about 60 seconds. Thanks for tuning in to this watch along. While there's a break in play, here's a reminder to hit the like button, subscribe and click that notification bell. Your support helps to keep the channel going. While we're here, you can now become a member to enjoy perks, including badges for the live chat, but also bonus material, such as interviews with top players from both ATP and WTA tours. The membership link is pinned in the live chat. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. So whether it be serves or volleys, forehands or backhands, serve bots or drop shots, We've got you covered, whether that be via our website, talking-tennis.com, where you can read features and interviews from our top writers. Or if you prefer us in audio form, you can subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Amazon or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts from. Remember, we offer you wall-to-wall -wall coverage via our regular watch-alongs, Magazine shows such as Nick's WTA Weekly or Damien and Mario's ATP version. Plus, we deliver top content from people on the ground, actually at the tournaments, so you get even nearer to the action. So, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on all things tennis. So we've got some Aussie open stats now on the on the screen that we were sort of touching on earlier. And yeah, I, I think you're right. It was the Azarenka first serve <laughs> points one, which was um which was just way down. I mean, that is incredible. First serve points, and of course it was a first serve where Yastremska ends up winning the set. So it was a Azarenka first serve, Yastremska loving it. Probably maybe it's an indication that Astrem Yastremska's enjoying a bit of pace on those serves and that she's she's yeah. enjoying that and and i also think that yeah azarenka's for, certainly that last point wasn't risky enough wasn't close enough to the line and actually yes Dremska's return wasn't as sensational as some of those other ones were but it was certainly good enough to put her in charge of the point and uh she punished azarenka with an excellent winner um down the line and uh, it was one of 21 winners off the racket of yes and i mentioned how the ukrainian was solid if not spectacular against Von Drusova in the first round, because I don't think she had to be spectacular in that match. But she's been very, very spectacular. I'm not sure if you can can modify spectacular, but I've just done it anyway. But you get the idea uh, today so far. Mind you, uh, I went for Azarenko in three, so may well may well still fit that. Did you manage to get your photo out there on the on the Twitter sphere? I did. I'll try and I'll send it to you. No, you, I don't, well, you can, but you might not need to because I can find you pretty quickly on Twitter. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> uh, yeah, check I mean, it off the screen. screen. But I'm already there. I, if it was a tweet from someone else, then that would be handy. But as it's from you, I should get it. Okay, there's a nice little picture of uh, Schwartzman. Oh, there we just, go. Here we go. He's just shoving his fingers in his mouth. So it's Eurosport in uh, in the UK that you're... Uh, you're yeah. Yeah. There we go. 
and he was doing it a lot because there was a lot to cheer. But it's funny how he was doing it on every point. I got a bit of heat for this take, and Jethro feel 100% free to disagree with me. I'm, I I couldn't give a flying proverbial. But um, I <laughs> tweeted and also put it to the YouTube community as well. Like, what are our thoughts on uh, Andreva, you know, just going, yeah, on every single point? And the, the, the heat I got was like, you know, she's 16. She can do what she wants on, on, on winning these points. And, of course... I could have defended myself by going, look, I'm just putting the question out there. But then I wouldn't be 100% like accurate with that defense in that, yeah, I am leaning towards it being a bit much, if you like, on every single point. She does get a bit of leeway because of her age. But um, uh -huh. yeah, I don't know. Because the, I guess the question comes down to, is it an absolutely genuine response? Because if it is, then I guess I'm okay with her celebrate. But I just felt it might have been a bit forced on some of those celebrations. I don't know. Maybe I'm being harsh. What do you think? Um, I'll be honest, I didn't really I didn't catch either of her last couple of matches, so I I didn't see it. Um, <laughs> but I know there's been a lot there's always a lot of criticism when players are sort of constantly um kind of pumping themselves up and like like Shelton's, you know, quite noisy. But yeah, Certain I just hadn't. I didn't notice it was Shelton. Absolutely Johnson, hate but... him. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Shelton's I... more like he is very loud in his celebrations, but like he, you know, he's, he's he comes from college tennis, and you know, it's not. Okay. I don't think it's obnoxious or anything. You know, it's just like <laughs> it's funny because Nor Norrie tried it as well. He was kind of going, yeah, "Come on, vamos!" Fist pumping after every point Against last Luke. season, and that was when he was oh, playing like... badly. And I was like, "You're just using up all your energy at this point, mate. Come on." didn't used to do this i just think it was just like a new new thing he was trying um but you know i don't really have an issue with it i don't i don't really like it when players and i don't care who it is i don't like it when players celebrate loads when their opponent makes like a really bad unforced error yeah or like you know smash a forehand and it clips the top of the net and just say and just kind of wanders out and like i saw Djokovic do it against you know the davis cup last year Still, got really, really unlucky with a with a net cord, and Djokovic was like, "Yeah, yeah." Okay. And I really just, I, and like, I see, I see it a lot. And like, to be fair, and like, that doesn't, and like, this isn't a criticism of, of Djokovic. Like, Leighton Hewitt, one of my favourite players, had a really nasty spat with uh, one Ignacio Chela, Diego's coach, at the Australian Open when um, <laughs> Chela did the same thing, hit the net cord, and the ball went flying out, and Hewitt just went, "Come on." And then broke, and then Chayla actually spat spat at him, which was oh. <laughs> really nasty. But so, like, I don't. It's not like I'm criticizing players. I'm just saying, like, I don't. I don't like to see it when it's like a really bad unforced error. But like, if you just hit like a crazy awesome winner, you can you know do a lap of the court. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I think Federer beat Lubicic um, with a with a uh, insane net cord in the final of. Indian Wells about 15 years ago, more or less, maybe 10. Uh, of course, Lubashic goes on to be his coach, but he doesn't he doesn't go mm. doesn't go crazy on that. I mean, he um, but I you know, winning on a crazy net cord like like I think Rublev also did against Runa a, a year ago in Australia. It's if it's such a tense one, it's really difficult. And I've seen people go like that, but then they're like, Oh, I've won the match, you know. Um, but generally just mid-match. I find with an unforced error, this is my natural reaction. And, and so that's the, the key, I think, is my just to do a, I mean, I'm just so pleased to win the point sometimes if it's a big one, you know? I mean, if it's, you know, if it's six love, three love, I'm probably not even doing a fist pump. But mm. if it does go long and it's a key moment and it's an unforced error, but I'm not, I'm not screaming, I must say. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously kind of, you know, it would be absurd to kind of say, to try and police it and to sort of be like okay well if it's non for sarah at this point in the match you can celebrate quite a lot but if it's right, isn't that match, it? yeah yeah Celebration like and that's it. not what i'm suggesting at all i'm just yeah i guess it's just sometimes it can be a bit over the top um of like a you know it's clearly just a terrible shot but like if you if you know if they hit a rubbish shot and you go like oh come on that's that's fine it's more if you get really really loud and over the top over a really bad error it kind of just seems a bit obnoxious 
I, I but again, disagree. I'm not crit- again, I'm not criticizing. No, I just, for example, I mean, so there's, I've, I've sort of hinted my, my Andreva stance, and yet I don't think I'm contradicting myself by defending Carlos here when, when Craig Shapiro called him out for celebrating a point. Um, but it wasn't an unforced error. There wasn't a net call. There wasn't anything bizarre in it. It was just because uh, Craig wasn't happy that he'd celebrated a point because of the moment in the match and the moment in the tournament. So it was beginning of the second set, I think, in the first round. Yeah, but you break your, your opponent. And I think it was a break of serve. You break your opponent's serve and you just don't know. You, you, you Let's say Carlos doesn't break serve in that particular game and the other guy holds serve. You know, maybe the other guy goes on. I can't remember who it was. That's why I'm calling the other guy. Maybe the other guy goes on to win the win the set, and suddenly Carlos is in a in a dogfight. And 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 okay, Carlos. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. That's yeah. That's not. No, I know you're not. I know you're not. I think he. I think Craig Shapiro was being a right miserable. Yeah, I think so too. I think he just doesn't like Carlos. That's that's what I. Yeah, like that. that. I remember because I remember that quite well, and that was pathetic. Yeah, it was. To be honest, like it. It was. It was a ridiculous complaint. It didn't make any Mm. sense. No, because um, it, it, listen, C- Craig yeah. has probably seen more tennis matches than than both of you and me put together. So he will know that you can lose tennis matches. You can't win a tennis tournament in the first week, but you can certainly lose it. You know, so exactly. You, you're going to celebrate big points throughout the tournament, and it, it, it's yeah, because you're just, you're just taking another step towards winning that tournament. And of course, you might go on and win it, and you might go on and win it without dropping a set. But that's irrelevant. Um, yeah, no, of course. Yeah. Yeah, no. And as, as I said, I wasn't, you know, having a go at players who do it. I was just saying, I think that's when it seems a bit over the top. But, yeah. You know, I but I, like I say, it's, it, it's if it's worse. natural, and I think with Carlos on that that's, particular I think moment, that's the thing. When yeah. it seems forced is when it kind of gets that's, a bit jarring. Yeah, and that's what I thought with, that's my feeling, nothing more than that, with Andaleva. But um, yeah, okay. I got it. Got a little bit of uh, heat for that um, that question, but it's true. It was a loaded question, I guess. And hey, I, I knew when I put the question out there that I could get that response, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Thirty fifteen here on the yesterday. I was just about to say before Azarenka oh, sure. started serving. Yeah, it was a good shot. Before Azarenka started serving, is she just needs to get some holds basically and, and get that. Somebody hopefully will have told her about her first serve stat, but she may even be aware of it in that she was. Yeah, just not getting. Um, not getting any uh, uh, decent amount of points on their first serve in that first set. 29%. Yeah. Thirty all here. Yeah, I said Borj Medvedev might be starting for a while now. Is Borj Medvedev coming on after this one? I believe so, yeah. It was meant to be 2.30 and yeah, now it's saying 3.30, so... Uh, we will also, be ooh. covering. Say again? Norska versus Svitolina are on court now. Yeah, I saw that. I saw Svitolina walking on court, yeah. The three matches I think we'll be covering, or pretty certain we'll be covering all three, is um, this one, then her catch, Kazo, and then Ketsmanovic. Um, I think Ketsmanovic Alcaraz is going to be fun. It's like when Dan Evans plays yeah. Alcaraz. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it, it could be straight sets. It could be six two, six three, six two. But I think it's going to be some fun points. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, uh, you know, I, mean, I told you the context when it when this famous line from from Damien came out. Right, it was ju- it was exactly yeah. just it's perfect, and you know it therefore because it's perfect timing for me because yeah, it was the Dan, Dan Evans match. Um, in the so funny. Yeah, because Jack was understandably getting quite excited about that match, and and that's why mm. Damien came back with that repost. Yeah, well, I had. I also had. Um, I had this match as Alcaraz Draper in my draw. Right. But then he went five sets with um, Giron in uh, in round one. That's and I was right. like, yeah, that that's everything. absolutely yeah. not happening. Yeah. Shame. And like, okay, like, that's no disrespect to Giron. I've actually been quite a fan of his recent for a while now. But um, and of course, that would have been nice to have had Ketsmanovic because I guess Ketsmanovic um. Was it, yeah, because Manovich was set to play Draper in the previous round, I think, round three. And mm-hmm. I was looking forward to that, potentially. Because I saw them play at the Davis Cup. And yes, Kets Manovich was great. Um, and Draper was slightly off it. Um, but it was a really entertaining. It was a straight sets win, I think. seven. I'm going to say 7-6, seven, 7-6. Six, seven, six. It could have been 7-6, seven, 7-5. Seven, but it was a really entertaining straight sets win for Kets Manovich. 
Mm. Damien's not a, 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 a Kesmanovic fan. A double fault here for Mastrensko, by the way. So I've got a quick point. He's not a, oh, really? like a fan in the way he plays, but I, whenever I watch him, he's quite spectacular. Yeah, I like I like his game style. I mean, but maybe I, I just watch him three yeah. times. I've watched him three times in eighteen months, and one of those was like Carlos, and that was insane. And then the other two were the sort of in Estoril and, and Davis Cup, and and he was yeah. good fun. Yeah, but when he's when he's good, he's really good. Um, I did see him actually at Wimbledon last year. Okay, he got his got his ass handed to him by oh, really know, probably the best player, probably the, probably the best player of all time. So you know, it doesn't. Oh, okay, that was against Djokovic. Okay, no, no. <laughs> Djokovic. God, get out of this guy. Oh, okay, Schwartzman. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, of course, seven. That was obviously Manovic on glass. Yeah, do you want to hear the score? Well, just one second. Azarenka's broke for two love. Now give me the okay. score. Now give me the um, score. I'm going to get it up now. I know the first set was six love. This is 2023? 2022. Yeah. So I was there on court seven. This was the day I'd see. I'd been seeing each other in the queue, and then I got in about eight hours later. Okay. Um, one sec. Schwarzman beat Kets. Kets Manovic on grass is all right. I think I saw him win a two mat, a couple of matches at, at Queens. 18 months ago so not last year the year before i think I yeah but, that wrong. you know like Schultz was actually quite good on grass because i mean he took yeah i think I know he, he's not bad on all three practice. services yeah yeah i mean he like if you look at his grass record beat chillich in straight sets at queens in 2019 okay baratini took them to five sets that year as well on, at, on grass at Wimbledon. Uh, 2019 um, yeah which is when baratini was you know, making his big breakthrough and he's still really good, yeah. but then he got trounced yeah. by Federer. Yeah, um, but still. So the score in that match, God, they felt some, oh, Diego's 4 0 against Kemanovic. Is he really? Yeah. This match is so random. So he random. Was, uh, so Schwarzman won 6 love, 6 3, 6 4 at Wilmington last year. Wow. And I was, I was right. I mean, sat right. Was Kemanovic all right? Was he physically all right? He was fine physically. He was a bit flat, to be honest, but Diego played really well. Sounds like and then it, he yeah. carried he carried that into his match with Sinner. The first 10 games, Sinner and V. Schwartzman, you couldn't you couldn't separate them. And then Sinner broke at the end of the first set and then barely lost again. So yeah. Um that, and then he yeah, Rome twenty two was in one of the matches of the year, I thought. That was six two three six seven six to Schwartzman. I think Schwartzman served for the match and then got broken. And I think Katmanovic met served for the match or something like that. Or had match points on Schwartzman's serve and then um yeah, he ended up winning a tie break. It was that was amazing. Azarenka's doing exactly what she needed to do in oh. terms of getting yeah, that sorry. getting that first serve um, a bit better. Uh and just getting a couple of holes under a belt because she just needed to hold serve a couple of times and you you knew that how good she was on the return was going to give her a good chance now she's not won this game yet but she's 40 love up and she's got it, got it done now with a lovely forehand down the line after a drop shot from Yastrzemska and this is exactly nice. the reset that she needed three love this is more like it um going back to that head-to-head -head, this is actually really funny this might be one of his most dominant head-to-heads I've ever seen from him so Apart from the Rome match, Diego has bageled him in every single encounter. Oh, wow. So French Open first round 2020, when he Diego got to the semis, that was peak Diego. Six love, six one, six three. Buenos Aires in 21, six love, six four. And then you have Rome, six two, three six, seven six. And then last year, Wimbledon, six love, six three, six four. Diego didn't win that title in 2021, did he, in, in Buenos Aires? But I'm guessing he's won Yeah, he it. did. No, oh, he did, did he, yeah, in 2021? There were, there were two in Buenos Aires, like, close to each other for some reason, no? I don't know why I'm saying that. Was like, it? a Buenos Aires oh. one and a Buenos Aires two? Oh, it was Rio. I think it was 21, though. Oh, okay. Let me let me get this. Let me. I thought he didn't win it in 21. Like Buenos Aires, I think we thought he didn't win it. Um, Because I remember nicknaming it the, the Diego Schwartzman Open because it's sort of didn't have the, to me on, on paper didn't have the strongest field in the world at that point there might have been one or two players in the tournament 21 that we now look back on as being uh pretty decent but um 
Oh, this stupid new ATP website is driving me mental. Honestly. Yeah, and yet, uh, this, listen, this is just a completely basic point. But something that's improved on the WTA website is now when you Google two players and they're head to head, um, it does now. It does now say it if that makes sense. So um, yeah. So it used to you'd get sort of tennis tonic or a random, but now whereas what the WTA used to want you to do is go to their website. Go to the head-to-head -head section and then type in the players' names. But I, I still do that. I still do that. But now, I, for me, I'm googling it. Especially if I Google followed by the WTA initials, it does then take me to the WTA website and it immediately takes me to the head-to-head. -head. Terry, do do tune in to the Svitolina match. But if mm -hmm. you can stay with us, that would be much appreciated. We are going to obviously. Um, I'm going to stick with as I think as for now. But if you can give us updates on how that's panning out, and by the way. Uh, um, uh, Jethro, you can watch whatever match you want, but um, I've just got Azarenka and Stremska in the title, so I'm going to stick with this one, especially as we're in the sort of, you know, latter-ish stages of the match. Mm -hmm. Last word on Diego for the night, it was 21, he won Buenos Aires. I think he beat Surrender. Did he win it, did he? Oh, okay. Yes. So I thought he didn't win it. Um, it was 2018, he won Rio when he beat Vidasco. That's a player I missed, Vidasco. I mean, listen, you get to the final of Rome, you win your home tournament in Buenos Aires, you win Rio as well. You get to, I'm just trying to think of, did he get to the quarterfinals of the US Open in, in 20... 2017 and 2019. Yeah, right. I know. He should game. have should have done it in 2020 and 21 as well, but lost up, got upset by Nori and Van der Zandtjop. I mean, that's a good... So he could yeah. have four US Open quarterfinals for them quite easily. What is it? What? Yeah. Uh, of course, there are two goals in tennis. One is to become world number one, and one is to win a Grand Slam. Both of these evade or elude, I should probably say, 98% of the tour. In fact, I'd love to know what percentage of the tour, if we, I don't know where we begin the tour and end the tour, but. Um, oh, I'd say over 99%, if all pro Over 99, yeah. yeah. Yeah, probably. Over so, 99, I think. Yeah. So. Therefore, for the other ninety nine percent, what are your what are your hopes? You know, reach the top ten. Uh, because in yeah. a way, being number two or number ten is not a huge difference. In a way, you know, in a way, between two and and, and fifty is probably not a huge difference either. But yeah, yeah reach the top ten in the world. Uh, maybe I think make it depends the, on your ambition. Like, of course, it does. I mean, listen, expectations. Yeah, of course. And so I'm just thinking of X player rather than. You know, Liam Brody, perhaps, for example, you know, having a run at Wimbledon, winning a match on centre court. These are your ambitions. But let's just say for the rest of the tour and, and probably including Liam in this, the the, the 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 other thing is to sort of win a tournament, win a tournament. Yeah. And if it's on, in, on your in, in, on your home territory, so for a Brit, maybe Queens, for, for obviously an Argentinian, Buenos Aires. And, and so on and so forth and for a spaniard barcelona or madrid perhaps and and, and so on um yeah. that's it really and again whether it's five tournaments yeah. or one not a big difference in a way you of course it's great to win five rather than one but one is one is almost enough that's not to say you just you know rest on your laws at one uh and yastremska's held serve with a lovely forehand she's still beautiful the far the far more aggressive player of the two that's not to say that yeah. as a rank of, pushing it at all here it's just that she's so so big yeah. i think yeah i think i think i don't know I, I guess if i was a pro aspiring to be a pro player it would have to just be so incremental it would be you know top thousand then aim for the top 500 obviously you target yeah, you get your first ATP icfs and this target 500 and then you target the top 250 and then you're looking at top 100 and then when you're in the top 100, then it's either top 50 or win a 250 somewhere or like those are kind of your next goals. And it kind of, it just has, that's the kind of gradual, it needs to be gradual. And I mean, you get players who are ranked 500 in the world who are like, I want to be one on the world one one day, which is great to have that ambition. But I just think it's, I don't know, I guess it's just healthier to be setting smaller targets and just keep what building up. I agree. I agree. And, and, and this is not, 
I do agree. When you look at it, when you and I are speculating and, and maybe when you're the coach and also when you're the player. Now, it may have been, to be fair to her, it may have been the way I framed the question. But when I asked that question to Alina Avanesian, who is ranked, I'm going to say about mm-hmm. 60 in the world. In fact, can, if you can, you, can you find out her ranking for me very quickly? Of course. Uh, Avanesian, while I look I actually followed her on Instagram after I saw her in your interview. Okay, yeah. So she, yeah, she does say to me, look, my ambition is to one, but it, I, I can't remember, I'm sure it was, I didn't just say, hey, how's it going? She said, oh, I want to win a Grand Slam and be one number one. No, I, I, I'm sure it was like, you know, where, where do you hope to be? What I think, I think I might even ask her whether she'd rather be number one or rather win. I think she basically said both. Um, I mean, speaking she, of Vanessa, she had a fantastic run here. She's, she, I actually, I think I tipped her to win. Did she beat Zachary? Is that was that her big win here? Sets. Took a set of I, in the last round. Yeah, I watched that Kostic one, and I was willing uh, Avanesi on Alan, but it was kind of on Kostic's racket, and perhaps it was as close as it was because Kostic was erring at times. Um, yeah. The problem for Azarenka is that you're, you're just so vulnerable on serve here that that three love isn't maybe as big an advantage as I, as I thought it might have been because it's now quickly three one, mm. and now um, she's threatening. To get it back on serve. Um, what's I her ranking? Make it serving first. Uh, she's 74. Yeah. But I'm going to yeah, try and have a look at the live ranking because she would have undoubtedly gained a fair few points on this. Probably, yeah. She lost to Astapenko in three sets last year at the U. I'm going to say at the US. It might have been straights actually, but I thought it was three sets. So she's she's uh, there or thereabouts. She should be getting in the top 50 soon. She had a pretty good run in Berlin, but I don't think she sees um, grass as being a particularly favourable surface for, for, for her. Okay. She then didn't qualify for Wimbledon, funny enough. Ah, so she is... Wow, yes, the Nemska. Just... Crikey. When, it, when it's going right, it's going very right, and now she's got three break points. Um... Okay, so her live ranking is up to sixty-one, mm-hmm. and I don't. And ironically, Yastremska's live ranking is sixty-two right now. Wow. So yeah, I probably a win yeah. for Yastremska so. today, and, and that might be enough to break the top fifty. But um, yeah, Avanesin, I'll get there. I, 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 to top fifty, I mean, um, oh, for she's, sure, she's pretty solid. She'll probably end up being one of these players that sort of wins the matches she should. If you don't turn up on the day, if you have a, a bad day at the office, she'll beat you. But she might not be spectacular yeah. enough to, to go to the top 10, for example. But like a sort of Kalanina sort of player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sounds Who like also that. had a very disappointing run after last year. I, I, I had her going fairly deep, but not deep, Did but you? a decent run. As I think it saves one of those break points with a fairly easy swing volley, pretty close to the net. Uh, yeah, Stromsko on the defence there didn't did the right thing, I think, but just didn't get anywhere near enough depth on that defensive shot. So fifteen forty though, still a bit of work, here, a lot of work here actually for. Uh, and that first serve, despite the fact that she won the point, actually was still a bit too cautious for my liking. But nevertheless, she got away with it because Yastremska yeah, dumped the return into the net. That first per- serve percentage is going up though; it's now at forty seven percent, and the reason is. It's gone from 29 to 47% as quickly as it has. Actually, as uh, Azarenka now is 100% on first serve points one. So that tells you something. That that reset, I wonder if she knew something about that. I, if I was in a... And she's just aced, by the way. If I um, if I was there, I might ask her about that yeah. in the press conference. Were you aware at that, cha- at that end of first set how bad you were on the first serves? I will, probably wouldn't say bad. But you know what I mean? I'd, <laughs> I'd say, well, did someone tell you you were 29% and then you suddenly went to 100 or is that just chance? <laughs> did you watch any of the uts by the way what when i was in london yeah no i was I was, I was really busy that weekend i think it was around christmas i think i was doing christmas shopping and all that and if not, jamie jamie got a press pass yeah no that i mean it looked really fun um Drape, no, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, Drape, yeah, did, yeah. yeah, he did, yeah. Well, did, Got another yeah. break point here for Yastremska on the uh, uh, as an advantage here for her because mm. Azarenka um, put an unforced error into the net. 
Yeah, I mean, the only kind of clip I really saw make make, make waves from that tournament was when Rublev was not acting particularly well, unless it was all a bit of fun. But oh, what did he? Yeah, yeah. that that's very unRublev. Yeah, it's usually kind of very self-directed anger, but this was kind of on someone else. Um, he's a he's a perplexing character as Rublev. He is, and Yastremska breaks, and this time the first serve doesn't do enough, uh, so that 100% stat has gone down, and so we're back on serve. And there was a little swing of the racket at the ball, and I think Victoria is a bit annoyed. Um, yeah, she is. That's one of those that could go anywhere, that ball, by the way. I mean, that could easily just hit the umpire on the head, you know. I'm not I'm not <laughs> saying that she's, you know, I, I'm just always seeing this whenever, because this is, this is this would fall into the the, the disqualification um, category because she doesn't have to hit this ball. I mean, uh, but for those of you just tuning in, nothing oh. of the sort was happening. Medical timeout got... already for Fitalina. Yeah, is that what you're going to highlight? Yeah, thank you, Terry. Oh dear, that's um, that's not good. That's not encouraging. I want you to keep us, Terry. You're you're like a third. Uh, commentator, I want you to keep us updated on this. It's very useful. Mm. Not so early on as well. Yeah, that's disappointing. Ken Wen Jeng, first Grand Slam final. Mm, mm, mm. We're going to get like, oh, it's going to be Paulini, isn't it? <laughs> She's beaten, she has beaten um, Sabalenka before. Uh, Paolini, uh, and okay. she all I think even at a slam, she might have done it. Um, she I think she mentioned it to me in a, in a interview or maybe a press conference last year. Actually, you know what? If I'll be I just because I love Mario, I'll be so happy for him if Paolini and Sinner and both I, make the final. Oh, and I love I love Paolini as well myself and, and Sinner too. But mm. I, I, the, my fear is that she gets the final and then gets pummeled. That's my, yeah, they, you know, if it's her against um. Who's random in the in the lower half of the draw? I mean, quite cheap, um, not, not quite random, but but it's just such a difference, though, isn't it? Um, Paulina, quite, I, mean, I, can't, I can't understand how how Paulina managed to beat uh, Sabalenka, but she did. I, th um, I think Kostiuk is probably the weakest from that side of the draw. Right, so I'd love, I'd be fine with that. I'd be super fine with a, a Paulini Kostiuk. Um, Bring on the chaos! Yeah, 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 yeah. The and meanwhile. Is, can, Let's get cool. a let's get Nuno Borge against Taylor Fritz final. <laughs> yeah, just bring on the randomness. Yeah, I just yeah, I, I actually have picks in to win this tournament. So Terry, I think if I oh, did you okay? Yeah, if I understand yeah. this correctly, medical timeout for Svitolina and back, meaning I think she's back from the medical timeout. Um, fingers crossed, it might be nothing more than just a bit of sickness. Um, yes, yeah, Stremska is now 30 love up on her serve. Um, on Flashcore, it's still saying medical timeout for Nostalgia. Oh, okay, maybe, Sorry. maybe he's referring to himself as, as back rather than um, maybe he's back watching this. Yeah, right. <sighs> um, I can find some stuff. Oh, doesn't look good. If you want to pick pick up Jose's tweet and chuck it on the stream. Oh, I see. It's Yes, it's not an illness. Yeah, I see Jose's tweet now, yeah. Do you reckon she picked that up in practice? Uh, maybe. Maybe she was lingering. Yeah, Terry Sander manipulating her back. Yeah, it was one of those sort of three, uh, and she's a breakdown at Moscow as well, as one of those sort of three, and someone who's not won a slam. That was one of the reasons I was kind of rooting for him. And and age as well, because, you know, if, if Kim Wen Zheng not winning a slam, yeah, not such a big deal. But Ange Jabeur, Svitolina slightly to a lesser extent, because Jabeur's not had quite the, the number of chances that Ange has had. <laughs> Yeah, gosh, I don't. I was asking. I said in the stream. I think if Ons gets the Wimbledon final this year, I just I won't be able to watch this one. I hear the There's question asked a lot 
about ons and i hear the answer coming back of of some optimism from a lot of people but i don't share that optimism no well this is this was me last year i thought that one yeah me too. me too and then she, she got in open. better chance last year oh yeah 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 definitely so yeah, unless she gets madison bringle in this year's final i could just like i just don't i just don't know it's just so much pressure on her someone we can all analyze matches and, and get it wrong in, in how it turned out especially when we look at the the mental side of the game okay so it does look like uh, she is going to try and continue at least um for what terry is saying um especially when we analyze was that a choke i think it's 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 one that we can try to guess at uh and of course if the player recognizes it and admits it afterwards that that helps <laughs> for sure but it's really difficult to speculate however the ons final against uh marquetta uh, for two or three reasons i would suggest the occasion was the dictate the, the the key factor behind the result two or three reasons first of all um watching it the eye test is as you, you know you, as, as you you touched on earlier with with a different analysis there uh regarding sabalenka's game tells us something but i can also tell you some people that were watching ons before the match started Pam Shriver's take on Ons's preparation, for example, suggested some some you know the occasion was 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 there and some some mistakes that Ons maybe made in the build up to that final. And then finally, and perhaps most importantly, somebody quite close to the Ons camp said, "I, I asked about the analysis of the match and and something along those lines." And uh, they said, "Listen, all the analysis in the world doesn't mean anything because it's not about that." that she lost that final it's it's about the occasion um yeah of course so. well i think well and she's come out and said recently as well that which is really i mean it's really it's really sad that she kind of was like oh, okay i win a slam and i can go off and have a child but yeah now i've yeah. not won a slam i still want to win one and then have a child and it's just that's so much to put on yourself because she's so passionate about having a kid, but also so passionate yeah. about winning a grand slam. Something you easy to get, yeah. And obviously, yeah. men don't have that issue. Yeah. Taylor Fritz. Taylor Fritz was married and had a kid before, you know, <laughs> before he was even in the top hundred when he was eighteen. You know, it's yeah, yeah. It's um, it's really sad. But it's so, like, good. I'm not, I'm not gonna count her out of winning one because she proved me wrong last year by getting to the final Again. it's not me counting counting them out at all but by the way an excellent hold of curve there for Yastremska and uh uh our resident uh Azarenka fan Jake has joined the tr uh, chat at the point when it did look like um she might well uh win that last game Svetlina but... can't serve this is terrible to watch apparently. oh no oh no that's from Jose Yeah, and uh, Terry saying move me swiftly. So, oh dear. Hey, Jake, how's it going, mate? Say again. I was saying hi to Jake. Oh, okay. We sit, uh, well, it sounds like we're due a severely in retirement any second. Oh, yeah, she's retired. Oh, dear, that is such a shame because this, this, um, yeah, this had opened up. This had to opened up a little bit, not crazily, but it had opened up. Oh, oh, that's so so disappointing. Yeah. At least we have a match on in, 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 here in Azarenka Yastremska, and um, well, in a way, this this first set is following certain patterns from the sorry, the second set is following some of the patterns from the first set in terms of Azarenka going up a break and then seeding that advantage. <laughs> now both players are going to hold it. <laughs> see the com comment from Jake. Yeah, that's funny, yeah. <laughs> so, 
somebody just hit the subscribe button so thank you for that if, if it's someone who's watching right now that's a point somebody asked me to send me send me the, send them the channel earlier so they can subscribe so we might get another one here this top half of the women's draw is all over the place from jose he's not wrong yeah i just just feel I mean, imagine empty. Yeah, I mean, imagine that happened in the top jaw of the men's with if Sinner and Djokovic went out early. Yeah, that's what it would take. Yeah, it's just we could have there. we could have Dino Prismich, you know, Alex Demin or semi final. Now that I would love. Sorry, Diminor against who? I mean, I know Diminor's out, but who? Diminor against who? I just pecked any name. I just put with Dino Prismich, but like it could have been anyone. Oh, okay, yeah. Or well, Sebastian Byers, who knows? <laughs> yeah. That Senna performance against him was, I was on stream for that. That was, uh, yeah, you were, yeah. That was incredible. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I, it's quite negligent of me, really, bearing in mind, obviously, doing all these streams and stuff. But I haven't actually seen much or even anything of Senna in this tournament. It's, it's really? Because yeah, but the reason is, is because I look at the matches and I go, okay, which ones should we do commentaries on and which ones are going to be interesting and competitive? Now, I know you might point to the fact that we, we've done a couple of Djokovic matches and you're like, really? Um, but, of course, there's no about Djokovic, so people are still tuning in, if you like. But um, Yannick Sinner is growing as a, as, a, as a name, and that's why sometimes when we do stuff about Yannick, um, oh, we've got a break point here for Yastremska. And that's the break. Oh, we've got a break. A oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I thought it was a break oh, point. Oh, dear, Jake. I mean, she's been absolutely hammering the ball. Dear, I say, oh, dear, Jake. Sorry, Jake. But, um, I mean, it's a big opportunity for both Svitolina and Azarenka to make both the quarterfinals, but even, even go much, much bigger. We really jinxed them horrifically. And I did say this would happen. Not this, but... So, Noskova is into the quarterfinals. We could well have a noskova yastremska quarterfinal. It's looking likely at the moment. I mean, Yastremska probably needs just one hole of so because she's breaking Victoria so often. Yeah. That if she holds it, I mean, she might want to break. I mean, I said during the tie break, I said what she needs is a set point on the turn because she had a set point on her yeah. serve. And I said, no, no, you want one on the turn. I am, to be fair, all for a Noskova run after... The absolute disappointment last year of being on this incredible run, getting to what the top sixty in the world, but because the entry list came out before she made the run, and then she, she lost, lost in the first round of qualifying. She looks a bit older than nineteen. I mean, not not crazily older, but she looks a bit older. Yeah, Stremska, how old is she? Twenty-three. Yeah, that's what seems about right. Okay, so Yastremska here serving at 4-3. The biggest news of the day so far emerging from Australia is the retirement of Svitolina. And so Blinkova, sorry, Blinkova, um, Noskova, another over, uh, progresses to the quarterfinal where she will play the winner of Yastremska Azarenka. And uh, Yastremska right now is warm favourite to progress because she's up a set and a break here, serving at 4-3. It's a forehand here from Azarenka. It's not done yet, but there's some good shots here, very close to the line from the ever-aggressive Jastremska here. And, oh, wow. Take a bow. Wow. Jastremska. I tell you what, man, she's played, she's more than earned this lead. She's played outstanding tennis. I'm so impressed. I don't think it's in any way. Uh, I, I did say before the tournament, I thought the women's side was going to be a lot more interesting than the men's. And I think that is completely delivered. Yeah, Jake here saying the only time he feels confident in Vika is, um, is the second serve return. Uh, but still, he's giving a lot of praise for that um, shot there or that rally from Yastremska. Yeah, I mean, the final shot from Azarenka, you thought, okay. I actually thought she was going to put that volley into the net. That's the, the yeah. normal thing. But, um, wow. 
Oh, but that return's no good. 30 love. Oof. That was a frustrated return. It was, yeah. Oof, bit way with there. Oh, yeah. Djokovic has lost one Grand Slam match, I think, in the last sort of two years or so. I'm thinking from, from when he lost to Raff at the French Open in 22, he wins Wimbledon, doesn't play the US Open, wins Australia, wins French, loses that final to Alcaraz, but of course there's six wins before that, wins the US Open and is currently still in the Australian Open. So I don't know how many Grand Slam matches that is, but it's probably about 30. Oof. And he's won, he's won 29 or, or 99% or whatever. Okay, yes, you, get so, you get so used Game to one. it, but it's, it's obviously been doing the rounds on Twitter again this year. But, you know, it's he like dropped... he, his last loss at the Australian Open was Dennis Isterman in 2018. Yeah, yeah. and the one before Do you was... remember... Do you remember Dennis Isterman against Novak Djokovic back in 2013, 14? I don't know. There was one game where he played the most outstanding return game ever. It was like a competitive three sets loss to Djokovic. And I remember thinking, oh, I like Isterman playing Djokovic. And I saw them playing each other in the first round. And I was like, oh, shit, you know, we might get a fun match like, you know, from like five years ago. And then I woke up the next day and he won. Uh huh. Yeah, Stremska is no. broken for five three. So Azarenka is now serving to stay in the match. Well, held for five three. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Actually, always <laughs> feels like a break, as I said. But yeah, no, held. Sorry. So Azarenka serving to stay in the match at three five. Hmm. Trouble, trouble. Listen. Azarenka holds here, which is a Oof, big art thing. Dear like, oh, dear. First serve. The first serve is going back down. I don't know, Jake, if you saw the first set, but Azarenka on the first serve in the first set was just not – it wasn't great. The stats showed that up with 29% first serve points won, and she had a really good start to this second set going up three love, and those first serve stats went up. But now Azarenka has sort of dipped a bit on the first serve again, and, and as Yastremska has won five games in a row. I mean, it's like a a phantom bagel if she wins this sixth run. Mm -hmm. um, now we're into the rally, which isn't as long. Oh, she goes long. I was going to say it's not yeah. the end of the world for Azarenka to get into the rally. I was going to say that she's made that. Good night. Yeah, indeed. Jake was thinking about switching to the juniors, but actually he's going to wait and see how this pans out. Listen, as an Azarenka hold. And it's like, okay, yeah, Stremska, how's your nerve? You know, and that that's that's something, especially on serve. Forehand into the net there. So I'm hearing, by the way, Svetlina pulled the back muscle after the second game. So what did happen literally on court? Yeah. I mean, may, yeah, but concussion. maybe, no, but maybe there was something carried into the match. You just don't know. But you're, you're possibly. possibly, possibly it just flared up and in that moment. That's it. What can you do? Uh, by the way, those of you just tuning in, do hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe. Lovely serve down the tee, Victoria. Maybe the best serve of the day. Um, I know it wasn't an outright ace, ace, but that's what she needs. She needs to be painting those lines. 40-15. Two game points for Victoria to force her opponent into serving for it. And yes, so Noska is through and wait, awaits the winner of this after Svitolina retired earlier. And it's an ace. That's what you need to be doing, Victoria. And that's what you need yeah. to be doing for the last couple of hours, but haven't been doing so. So She asked the question. She's asking the question. How's and I, your nerve, Diana? I, I think this is 50-50. I really, you know, normally server, hard court should be 75-25, but because of the circumstances... Victoria looks like she's grateful for that shade that's being offered by this, uh, by the veranda or whatever it is at the change of end. Hey, so I had a, a bit of a funny thought earlier. You know how Djokovic always, always gets the uh, the night matches in Australia. Mm -hmm. And he was finally given a day match. And then it rains and he plays yeah, indoors. Yeah, yeah. And it was basically like it was playing in the night time anyway. And it was Manorino. And it was Manorino who's played like 
fifteen thousand. About four hundred yeah. sets in the last week. Yeah. I mean, he might have to play the first semi-final on 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 Friday. Bearing in mind, he's in the half of the draw that is playing first each each week. If you know, know each day, it's just really, it's really, really. Can they not think of the UK viewers? We don't want like that's. Oh, because it be might be more, Sinner, like, yeah. I mean, Sinner, Jogger, two, two, is three but, a.m. Yeah, but that's how it yeah. is. That's how it is. The other thing I mean, if it's Djokovic, is... if it's Djokovic, Rublev, I don't oh, care. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah. don't, don't make me watch another one of those. I mean, Djokovic, Fritz is painful, to be honest with you, as well. But, I mean, Djokovic, Everyone's Fritz painful, is painful, but was especially painful at the US Open last year. when the only, the only younger players who are in any way exciting against Djokovic are Alcaraz, Sinner and Runa. I mean, yeah, yeah. Obviously, Sebastian Byers would take him to the cleaners, the French Open. And they just haven't played yet, but you know, all in good or, time. or just give us a random, m random one that we just don't know how to pan out, and someone who's going to try and paint some lines like Marajan. Okay, that's a good start for Yastremska. Fifteen mm. love, plus one. Maybe Victoria didn't look so good on the movement there, and in terms of the fact that. It wasn't like close to the line from Yastremsko and Azarenka didn't even move for it, but maybe I'm being a bit harsh. Okay, first serve goes wide. That's what you need from Azarenka. But funnily enough, now there's a bit of pressure on Azarenka here. Second serve. Are you going to be cool and put in a really good return, but not too cool as in too cautious, but also don't go wayward with it. Let's see how this pans out. Now, it's, that's kind of what you need to do azarenka ask the question Good and azarenka time. sorry yeah stremska fails to answer that question 15 all putting that shot into the net it was good it kept that low yeah and it was just probably the right sort of level of of making sure it's a decent return but maybe not too wayward and we're going to get another second serve here that was a very sort of nervy first serve there from yastremska her coach is rather than wolf whistling now he's got his eyes closed 15 all but it was sort of an, uh, like a, a like try and get in the zone eyes closed rather than a panicking i don't want to watch this good second serve to be fair from yastremska now they're into the now they're into the rally i would just stay solid here victoria too good I, this has been said. such a i've uh, just there's been such a difference in class from the baseline between them today yastremska has been the aggressor and she just hasn't really missed Yeah, like Azarenka I mean, just can't just can't get in the driver's seat in these rallies. I probably wouldn't have gone down the middle there when Azarenka did, but but I was sort of saying, listen, just ask some questions and and let's see if Yastremska's up for it, and she is at the moment. But still, thirty fifteen, it's not forty love, forty love, and you can probably breathe a bit of a bit more easily if you're Yastremska. But thirty fifteen, good first serve, as you say. No, she doesn't do it's well there though. Oh, but Azarenka goes long. But that, that, was a, that was a complete one, let off from Azarenka. Yeah, she had a agreed. backtracking. Agreed, because that plus one, I think if it's not serving for the match, Yastremska hits that for a winner. But yeah. she went the she went the cautious way, the way that Azarenka can not just get a racket on it, but can stay in the rally. However, she doesn't because she goes long. Two match points for the Ukrainian. Good serve. Good on the tee, yeah, another good serve. There we go. Out. That's done. She's done it with a winner. Wow. Take and a bow. Did not didn't and Andre call this as well? Oh, maybe he did. I don't know. He remember. did, and he even brought up the result from last year. It was seven six six four. Okay. So I think it? it was that. What was did he say something about the head to head as well? Is that what Yeah, said? um two and oh in the last so couple of years to Yastremska, yeah. So he actually was onto something there. Fair enough, Andre. Um, yeah, two two one the head to head, but the last two, uh, I think you were suggesting, wasn't it, that um had both gone the way of the Ukrainian. And now it's the last three, I believe. Um, so it's three one probably now that head to head, uh, if I understand it correctly. Um wow, just a oh it's two one, it's two one Azarenka, maybe. Or so it's maybe two two now. Oh, maybe okay. it's just the most maybe it's just the most recent we... one. Were we fed away. wrong intel? Oh, no, because I've been now looking at another. Oh, I've got three different websites with three different <laughs> results for this head-to-head. -head. So uh, let's go to the – I haven't gone to the WTA website yet, but let's see if I can – That probably should be your first one. 
I know it was, and I, I was just praising the WGA website for, yeah, so it's two and one for Azarenka uh, until today, right. so it's probably now three or, okay. um, I'm guessing they haven't quite updated it just yet. Yeah, Guadalajara right. being that recent one where Azarenka looks like she won that one. Yeah, so it's, uh, hmm. yeah, two and one, but now two and all. But anyway, whatever the stats were in the past, they, that doesn't matter right now because the most important one is the stat from today, which is a straight set win for um uh Yastremska and deserved win let's just have a quick listen to the on-court interview hopefully uh, it's gonna have German yeah all right let's not listen to it um all right <laughs> listen uh congratulations to uh Diana Yastremska who brought it today um, I don't know what the winner stats are on it, but I imagine that they probably she was pushing 40 winners, uh, which across two sets is, I mean, it's probably a bit less than 40. I'm, I'm going to guess off the top of my head, 32. Um, hmm. And Jake there saying fair play, it was deserved, which is nice of him to say, bearing in mind he's an Azarenka fan. Um, I don't know if you've, you've got the stats up very quickly or not on this one. Let me see if I can get them up pretty quickly, actually. Off the... I've, I've got them here. Okay. How many winners for Viastremska? Um... 38. Oh, I beat Peter. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, 30, yeah. Yeah. 38. 30, 37 on forced errors. So it's not a great ratio, but still positive. Just. Yeah. Um, no, a lot of unforced errors there, but um, uh, more than double the winners from, from Azarenka. I mean, Azarenka 16 is fine across two sets, especially as you're not, you're not winning as many games as your opponent. Uh, and Azarenka's percentage went up significantly enough to, to get that 52% of the first set. But really, the, the key stat was her from the first set, 29% of the first set of one. But mm -hmm. most importantly, the, the eye test as well told us that um, Strasemska was just, yes, yeah, was just phenomenal and, and easily a better player. And, and, and it felt like, and maybe I'm not being uh, generous enough for her for the first match that she played against Marquetta, but that fe felt like a solid performance from Yastremska, but today felt like a, a good one. And she, of course, she's won now. She's beaten two Grand Slam champions already. Um, yeah. And she won't be playing a Grand Slam champion in the next round because Noskova is up next. Um, Noskova will be feeling pretty fresh because, uh, unfortunately, uh, for Svitolina, her opponent, she had to retire uh, with a back injury, uh, pulled muscle, it seems. So, yeah, final thoughts from you, Jethro, on, on those two matches. You can say anything about anyone, whether it be Noskova, Svitolina, Azarenka, or Yastremska. There's four narratives there. You choose one. Oh, do a quick summary of both. Um, yeah, I thought Yastremska was really, really, really impressive. Uh, Azarenka, not quite, not quite with it today, I don't think. She wasn't aggressive enough. Too many, too many errors at crucial times, and you know she served for the first set twice and just couldn't go over the line. And your strength's going to take more risks, and you know it worked out for her. And then yeah, Noskova Svitolina just desperately sad, really, that that's happened to Svitolina. But I'm sure Svitolina will, will be back. She's been incredible on her on her comeback run, and I'm sure that's not the last we've seen of her of her making you know a really good run at a slam. But Yes, Jamska playing great. Noskova, young talent, playing great. So it's going to be a really fun quarterfinal. Cool. Jeff, a big thanks for joining us. And here's a reminder, hopefully it's on the screen right now, uh, of the upcoming stream we have. And I can see Jay Gaskin in the chat about it. We're going to have her catch Kazo with uh, at least Damien, but quite possibly Damien and Vanch, maybe even me as well, uh, because I don't plan on going to sleep tonight because I'm fortunate enough to not be working tomorrow. Uh, Jeff, on the yeah. other hand, has got his day job to attend to, which is um, fair enough. Sad. But I, I hope, Jethro, we get you on maybe once more before this tournament is out. We, we uh, will be pretty cool. much from the quarterfinal onwards, we'll bring every single match. And so I think the quarterfinals start tomorrow, right? Because this is the last day of the fourth round. So fingers crossed we'll have every quarterfinal on the channel. And um, I maybe the first quarterfinal tomorrow will be starting around the same sort of time as this match. Uh, and if it does um this week then then that's fine i think we'll also have matthew bringing us a commentary uh, maybe even tomorrow night so um if he brings us the first quarterfinal on 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 world labor tomorrow we may do sort of a, a pre quarterfinal stream as we've been doing pretty much throughout the last 10 days or so where 
anyone who's anyone comes on and, and we have a good laugh and then we'll have Matthew do the commentary for the match. But listen, uh, once again, Jethro, big thanks for coming on today. Thank you very much for having me on, as always, John. Jake saying he's going to be on for the Hercat stream and Terry um, saying, uh, you come back, Jethro, you are interesting. Uh, Thank you very much, Terry. Appreciate that. Direct and to the point. And to everyone else, uh, make sure you join us for Hercat Kazo. Also make sure you join us for Ketsmanovic against uh, Alcaraz, which will be up in a few hours as well. We're going to bring you both those matches. And you know the drill. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.
Hi, I'm here for a very spontaneous uh, video just to give some thoughts ahead of uh, what I believe is day nine, uh, although I must say I'm getting confused between all these days at the Australian Open. What I will say is though it is round four, and so we are now officially into the second week, and the matches today uh, include uh, Azarenka against Yastremska, uh, Borges against Medvedev, and many more, but I won't specify them all now because I'm going to give you some predictions for these matches ahead. I didn't do one on the eve of the tournament. So Nostradamus was sleeping on the eve of the tournament, let's say, and therefore was unable to give you that unbelievable pattern of results that tend to come to fruition, more or less. Uh, last year, of course, I did get the men's final right by saying uh, Sitsipas and Djokovic would make it, make it with Djokovic winning. I also tipped Sabalenka to win the title. And hey, presto, a couple of weeks later, she did. So pay attention to these round four predictions. They're coming up. Azarenka Yastremska, uh, for me, this falls into the category like a couple of other matches today where an underdog or a qualifier uh, who has exceeded expectations is finally going to meet their match and run into one hurdle too many. And that applies here. So you could probably guess where I'm going with this. Although I do see Yastremska taking a set, but ultimately with Azarenka prevailing and maybe going all the way to the final. Let's see. Uh, Noskova against Svitolina, similar category. Noskova, underdog. Svitolina, fancied, if you like, and may well also get to the final. In fact, many people, Svitolina, Azarenka, let me know in the comment section below where you fall between those two, arguably the two favorites or, or certainly uh, most experienced and, and fancied players to get to the final. Of course, Azarenka is a Grand Slam winner. Svitolina, yet to win a slam. Is this going to be her year? Well, I do expect her to make the quarterfinals and set up that uh, eagerly anticipated clashes that would be with Azarenka. Uh, again, I'll go three sets. Let's go for Noskova to take a set. Uh, Borges, Medvedev, also similar, similar category. I see Medvedev just being too good. Borges is incredible run, an incredible result in the previous round, knocking out the informed Grigor Dimitrov. Wonderful. But here it comes to an end. And I'll go straight sets. That's the conviction I have for the 2021 and 2022 Australian Open finalist, uh, Daniel Medvedev. Of course, he's yet to win the title here down under. Um, how far can he go? Can he go on and win the title? Mm. Discuss. Uh, Zverev Nori, for me, Zverev straight sets. Um, Nori beating Rude in the previous round in four sets. Yeah, kind of impressive, but... For the number 19 seed, I just think that this is a step up and it's going to be a step up too far. So I'll have the German prevailing there. Her catch, Kazo, similar. I think her catch is actually some of his assignments have been far tougher early on in the tournament and actually kind of impressive that he's got this far, given how tricky I think his draw has been. But today it's going to get a little bit easier against the guy who upset Runa in the previous round. And I expect her catch to prevail pretty comfortably again in straight sets. Uh, Paulini Kalinskaya, maybe the easiest one for me to predict. I know Damien feels the same way as well. And as a result, I am going with uh, Kalinskaya to win that one uh, against Paulini. I'll go in three sets. Uh, I think they're quite evenly matched, but I, I saw Kalinskaya play on the eve of the tournament. Um, and I thought, wow, that's impressive. She was very impressive. Um, pre-Australian Open. Uh, I think she beat Krajcikova. I may have to edit this out. I forgot that one wrong. Uh, in Adelaide. Again, I'll edit this if I get that one wrong. <laughs> um, and I thought, wow, here we go. Karen Sky is uh, looking good. And she's continued that form into the Australian Open. Paulini, uh, friend of the show, perhaps. Yeah. Um, but Paulini is somebody who is um has some limits i fear and i hope i would love it if jasmine was shoving my words down my throat like a bowl of pasta um sadly though i do think those limits will get exposed i mean they might not get exposed today she may well win this match but um i do think sooner rather than later the italian is exiting the tournament and i'm going to predict it to be today albeit in three sets 
Uh, Zheng Dodin, comfortable win for Zheng for me, straight sets for her. To be honest with you, when I was mentioning Azarenka and uh, Svitolina in that might get to the final discussion, Zheng was also in my mind. For me, it's kind of between those three. Um, maybe some other people out there might fancy Kalinskaya or, or or another player. But um, for me, it's it's those three. Uh, but we'll see. Um, but for me, she's winning that one in straight sets over the French woman. Finally, Kitsmanovic. Alcaraz, do we remember that incredible match that they had in Miami uh, a couple of years ago? Wow. If they could show half of the drama and excitement and quality more than anything else from that particular day, we are in for a treat. Slight difference in styles. I like Kitsmanovic, and I like him on a hard court and clay. And I have to say that maybe I'm a bit biased because I think I saw his two peaks in 2023 coming in Estoril making the final and then obviously beating Jack Draper and playing really well at the Davis Cup. And maybe I'm being deceived by Kitsmanovic and his level and, and some of the spectacular shots that he was able to produce across those two events. And I see him taking a set against Alcaraz, maybe even the first one, but ultimately... I see Carlitos prevailing in four sets. Let me know what you think about my predictions in the comments below. But um, yeah, uh, there, I, I asked this question on Twitter. So if someone wants to like um, also give a comment there, uh, go ahead. But let's, let's talk about that. So yeah, yeah let's, we've, got, we've got nine quarterfinal losses to look at so far from Andre Rublev at the slums. Six of them, I, I feel like, are clearly like in the unbeatable category. You cannot yeah. really blame him for anything there, which is Medvedev three times. And, and you have it on the screen now, Djokovic twice, Nadal. Especially uh, you know, for Medvedev, Medvedev on, on hard court, especially because yeah, you know, every every time Medvedev on hard court, the French yeah, yeah. Open. Uh, yes, yes. Would... If it, uh, yes, like I, I took that into consideration. So like yeah, Tsitsipas exactly. is only in between because it was in Roland Garros. If it was I don't know uh, Wimbledon, uh, I think he would have been you know in the second category, for example. Chilic Tiafo definitely players that he can beat. That's for, that's for sure. Uh, but then, but then again, of course, they actually peaked on the day on the, in the whole tournament. Even Chidish plays that insane ten point tiebreak at the end, maybe the best ten point tiebreak that we've seen in terms of like an individual performance. And Tiafo, of course, had a phenomenal U.S. Open, came very close to beating uh, Alcaraz even. And th there's also Tsitsipas, which to me is like probably closer to opponents he kinda can't beat, but I couldn't quite put him there for two reasons. First of all, uh, Rublev had just beaten him in Hamburg a couple of yeah. weeks earlier, and also Rublev defeated him at the US Open in 2019. So yeah. I can't really say that Tsitsipas is not gettable for him at the slums. Now the question becomes, like, if he loses to Sinner, which group does Yannick land in? And of course, this might very well change based on how the match looks. Like, if the, if the match is a five-setter, for example, I think it's going to be pretty clear that Yannick should be in the second category, or like maybe in between, just like Tsitsipas. If he gets totally crushed, we'll probably be like be more be more likely to put him into the first one. But just before the match, before the quarterfinal stage, where is Sinner if Rublev is indeed going to post his tenth quarterfinal exit? Where where would Yannick land then? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I I consider Sinner uh, at the state of today. Um, 
even if you know maybe n- not still at that kind of level but i'm not considering him much lower than medvedev at the us open uh, at the australian open sorry in 2021 as you know the moment of form um the way he's been playing uh, and also rublev never beat sinner in a completed match uh, his two wins uh, came um, came one after three, four games, Sinner retired in Vienna. Another one, Sinner had uh, injured his knee. He he was he won the first set with a 6-1 score. Uh, last year, uh, there's been that Madrid match. Um, Vienna was closer, but Sinner still won it in, in straight sets. Uh, before the match, it's a bit difficult because, uh, you know, still for uh, previous slams results, Sinner maybe is not already there uh, but still i think that uh, you know sinner should be f- physically fresher um, it's a matchup in in which so far he's always pretty much more or less find himself well um, so you know for sure for sure rublev is going to be the underdog in the match uh, in my opinion uh regardless of maybe the fact that he can win it uh but still he's not entering the match as the favorite once again um and then also maybe it will be perceived different different also uh you know considering how the slam will will end for sinner if he wins this uh this match uh you know uh maybe sinner wins the world australian open and then you you start thinking like mm, uh, you know that it was a totally acceptable uh acceptable loss um i don't know how to how to feel considering these two groups probably i would put him more or less in the same range at city past 2020 i don't know uh but still rublev has you know a better over, overall record against city pass across their matches uh than he has with sinner because you know he he still has to beat him in in a match that you know ends. Yeah, exactly. Like the the, the history, I know it's four two, but it doesn't look that great for Rublev when you truly think about it. The two retirements, um, and Sinner is a bit of a better version of Rublev in many ways. There's no backhand weakness. There's more dynamic uh, hitting. There's also uh, there's also like the uh, variety aspect of it that that he has yeah, exactly. added recently, Sinner. The serving, I would agree. I would argue that Sinner has a stronger sort of stronger potential going forward to his serve than Rublev does right now. Whether he's already uh, and whether he's already um, a better server than Rublev, that's probably kind of arguable. But uh, yeah, I I do think that this is kind of unwinnable for for Rublev. I think he's actually closer to me in my book to that one category than than to Tsitsipas. And I will actually be very surprised if he manages to yeah. beat Rublev here, especially in the best of five for in the best of five format, like best of um, best of three. Maybe I would still like his chances, but uh, yeah, Ghost is talking about the kinda in my tweet. The kinda is definitely added there just in order for the tweet to be a little more a little less negative towards Rublev. Let's say that, but um, yeah, just say you don't like bashers. Save us all the, all some time. I mean, is it is it fun when you're just bashing and uh, there's no variety component to it if it's just one-dimensional? Well, it depends on your preferences, you know? Do I like bashers? Some, maybe I do. Um, definitely, uh, and what are, what are you guys talking about? Uh, is it... Yeah, I think the thing is that, you know, Sinner, it... uh, Sinner seems to have more solution, more solutions right, right now uh, during the match and to close the point. Um, Rublev, you know, s- still has, uh, you know, <laughs> still has to kind of beat that those one-dimensional allegations, you know. <laughs> uh, Sinner recently, of course, his style is that one, and it's not his natural way to close the points. Maybe you know, with some some kind of variety coming to the net, but he's doing that in, I would also say, quite good level, you know. In, Yeah, I, I, I don't really see a path to victory for Rublev in a best of five set match against Sinner right now with the way that Yannick is looking, but 
also today of course we'll we'll have taken a lot out of him uh but um yeah i'm obviously very well i'm welcoming uh i'm you know i'm welcome to the idea of that i'm welcoming to the idea that uh rublev might just surprise or something but yeah, I think it will be a very, very a big shock if he eliminates him. There was an interesting comment under that tweet of mine from Oleg who said that basically um, he thinks that the Medvedev, Nadal, Djokovic matchups, they are in a different league. Like it would be, if, if Rublev beat them then, it would be like no effing way. It's a, what, what, what's that result? What, what is that result? I mean, it's, it's like impossible. I think Sinner is also in that group for me. Like, I, I, I think if Rublev beats Sinner, I'm going to be that shocked as well. Yeah. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.